Car number three, Joey Dunlop, second in this race last year, third in the Formula One, 14 victories to his credit. Joey Dunlop on the Castrol Britain Honda. Away safely now, Carl Fogarty, 750 Loctite Yamaha, out to make up for that bitter disappointment on Saturday. No wheelies as yet as number five, Trevor Nation, waits for his signal. He popped a wheelie the other day. Yes, he does, just a slight one, as he's a very tall man. He really wraps himself around that Ducati. Number six next will be Ian Locker, 12th in the Formula One at an average speed of 114.02. Now number seven, Nick Jeffries, fifth in this race last year, and runner-up on four occasions in the TT. Nick Jeffries away safely. Now number eight, Colin Gable from Andover. He pops a little wheelie as well, and now number nine, Philip McCallan, winner of the Formula One, third last year in the Senior TT. He gets the signal, listen to the Castrol Honda. And now a very different noise, number 10, Robert Dunlop, on the Norton. And that's the biggest wheelie of the Senior so far, number 11 now, Johnny Ray. Johnny Ray is away safely. Next will be Bob Jackson. Let's get a quick word from Jeff. Yes, yeah, Scotty Radcliffe's machinery looked and started, but luckily now I think it does fire up, but no joy for Steve Williams. Right, that's number 12, Bob Jackson away. Traditionally, as we say, number 13 is a non-starter, so next away will be number 14, Ian Duffus. Ninth of the Formula One at an average speed of 114.60 miles an hour. And Ian Duffus just waiting for that signal. He comes from Kakadi. And he's away at last, he gets away. Number 15, Steve Winslow. He retired at Crosby in the Formula One, but of course he won the vintage race last year in 1991 on the Southern 100 course. He's away safely. Now number 16, Mark Farmer with the other Loctite Yamaha. Fifth in the Formula One at 117.33 miles an hour, he's away. 17, a non-starter, so next will be number 18, Tom Knight, winner of uh, last year's Senior Manx Grand Prix and 11th in the Formula One on his TT debut at an average speed of 114.18 miles per hour, and Tom Knight gets the signal. Now, Steve Hislop, winner last year, absolute course record holder, member of the manufacturer's team last year, second in the Formula One at 119.59, and listen to Hislop go... He's away safely, we take a quick commercial break. Coverage of the 1992 Senior TT Race is brought to you by the Toolbox on Draper Tools. Stock is of everything the biker needs except the bike. The Toolbox, Church Road, Port Erin. Steve Hislop is a Michelin man. Ooh, can I be a Michelin man? I've already got a 125cc. From small bikes to super bikes, Michelin have the range and performance to make a Michelin man out of anyone. See your dealer. Make sure it's a Michelin. Oh, I'm going to be just like Izzy. Now there's a simple way to keep up with the action. A way you TT fans can get some satisfaction. If you can't get to the race, put a skylight on your face before you start to moan. Just reach out for the ball and ring the TT. For an update on the TT action, ring 0696 888 Calls charge at 30 pence a minute at all times. Well, I'll be sorry to see you go, Pete. What's that, Kev? Me bike. I had to swap it for this wicked T shirt. Only two of them ever made, apparently. Actually, you get them free when you join the AA. <laughs> Still, I reckon you got a good deal all the same. The AA, the only national motoring organisation with a permanent presence on the Isle of Man. Join via any AA representative or at the AA shop in Douglas and get a free TT92 T-shirt. Next away will be number 28, Simon Beck, but I can tell you that number 21, Steve Williams, did not get away. 21, Steve Williams, and Jeff says he can't get the bike going at all. He's not away. He could start, I presume, at the rear of the field without a time penalty, but we'll have to check on that later. Number 29, Paul Hunt, the local rider, gets away, and we go ahead of the field now to Motorcycle News, Glen Helen. Yes, indeed, Peter. Anticipation. Who will be the first man on the road? Will it be Robert Holden on that Yamaha? But more importantly, what will be the essential time differences here at Glen Helen? Here is the first machine interview. It is Holden, number one on the Yamaha. He's safely through Glen Helen on lap one. 
takes the sweeping left-hander up towards Craig Willies, but number two's pulled up some time, Steve Ward there, surely. Steve, who was sixth in the Formula One, and then two together, four and three, so Fogarty's ahead of Dunlop already. Already Fogarty ahead on the road of Joey Dunlop after just nine miles. Tremendous performance. Fogarty really going for this one following his disappointment on Saturday and obviously going well so far. That 750 Loctite Yamaha definitely ahead there on the road of Dunlop. This is number five nation on the Ducati. What a sound that is. What a sight in fact as well. That's Trevor Nation on the Ducati. Eighth in the Formula One on Saturday. He's also safely through here at Glen Helen on lap one. But uh, Fogarty really flying and to get uh, ahead of Dunlop on the road in just nine miles, a tremendous performance indeed. Now a quick approach by number seven, Nick Jeffries. Nick on the uh, Castle Honda, number six behind him, so uh, Jeffries has got ahead of Locker. So uh, tremendous indeed. Just look down the road, number eight now is Colin Gable. So shortly should be with us, Philip McKellen third last year, but winner of the Formula One. Here he is, but right behind him is Robert Dunlop. So there's no more than about 20 yards on the road between Philip McKellen and Robert Dunlop. So Dunlop on that Norton definitely has caught up time there on the winner of the Formula One, Philip McKellen. Tremendous performance indeed. So that Norton certainly going well over this first nine miles. But Fogarty was ahead of Dunlop. That is uh, Joey Dunlop, but Robert Dunlop certainly not far behind Philip McKellen, and he'll certainly have caught him on the Cronky Body Straight, no question about that. Number 11 now, Johnny Ray, steady performer, Johnny Ray on the Miller Honda, 12th in 1991. Number 12 now, Bob Jackson, Bob who's had a good week, certainly uh, finishing in high leaderboard positions and most of the races he's been in, fifth notably on the 600. Uh, despite the problems you may recall with the uh, bracket of the exhaust. Number 12, Bob Jackson safely through Glen Helen. We await the uh, arrival of number 19, Steve Hislop. 14 is now Duffus. The uh, bright machine, the day glow orange machine there of number 14, Ian Duffus on the 750 Kawasaki. At the moment, we can't separate Fogarty. Number 15 and 16 absolutely together there. Mark Farmer trying to get inside Steve Linsdell. His lop should be here soon, but it's four and ten. At the moment, it's Fogarty and Dunlop. We can't separate them here at Glen Helen on the first lap. They were both going particularly well, so absolutely equal there. Eight seconds up on Nick Jeffries of those that have gone through so far, and Jeffries one second ahead of number five, Trevor Nation. So, joint leaders, we have Carl Fogarty. There is his lop. His lock through on that, that white 588 NRS Norton, but uh, it's a Norton in joint lead, certainly at the moment. Number 18 now, Tom Knight, but obviously his lock ahead of Tom Knight on the road and going very well indeed. But certainly Fogarty and Robert Dunlop were very, very quick through here. We can't separate them at the moment, even slotting Steve Hislop in. Hislop is two seconds down on that battle for first place. Number 20 now is Gary Radcliffe, the local competitor. Gary Radcliffe, ninth in this race last year and safely through Glen Helen on that lap one. So it's number four, Carl Fogarty, and number 10, Robert Dunlop, absolutely equal here at Glen Helen on the first lap. Two seconds ahead of number 19, Steve Hislop. Then in fourth place, number 16 going well, Mark Farmer. He's five seconds down on his lap. In fifth place, number seven, Nick Jeffries. Jeffries one second down on number 16, Farmer. This is number 22, Sean Harris. That change of number on the 750 Suzuki, the New Zealander. There should be a little gap now because of some non-starters. So I can repeat again that they're absolutely equal here at Glen Helen. Fogarty and uh, Robert Dunlop, two seconds ahead of number 19, Hislop. Hislop, five seconds ahead of number 16, Farmer. Farmer, one second ahead of number seven, Nick Jeffries. Then Jeffries is one second ahead of a battle for sixth place, joint sixth place, in fact. Number five, Trevor Nation, and number nine, Philip McCallan. They've got a two-second advantage of joint eighth place men. Number three, Joey Dunlop, and number eight, Colin Gable. They're two seconds ahead of 10th place man, number 12, Bob Jackson. Jackson, two seconds ahead of joint 11th place. That was number 26 through there. Number 28, Alan McDonald and Simon Beck. So in joint 11th place, we've got number two, Steve Ward, and number 14, Ian Duffus. There's number 27 with a wide line there, Dave Goodley. Dave, who was 14th in this race last year and 22nd in the Formula One. So great racing, and we said it was going to be tight. It certainly is. It's uh, a Norton in joint lead there with Robert Dunlop and Carl Fogarty on the Loctite Yamaha, unable to split them at Glen Helen. Two more machines into view. The highest number so far is that of number 30, Dave Morris, just ahead of Paul Hunt, the uh, local competitor from Bradley. 
So to repeat once again at Glen Helen on lap one, their joint leaders, number four, Carl Fogarty, number 10, Robert Dunlop, with a two-second advantage over number 19, Hislop, five seconds down on that 16, Mark Farmer. In fifth place, number seven, Nick Jeffries, one second down on that, then joint sixth place, numbers five, Trevor Nation, and number nine, Philip McCallan, with that back to the Motorcycle News grandstand. Well, there's drama on the line. Steve Williams pushed away, but straight to his pit. I think Jeff is down there. Yes, I think it's an ignition problem. Dennis Trollope has taken the plugs out, and they're still fiddling with it. He's technically started the race here, of course, and he's on the outside of the pits by the Armco, but with absolutely no chance. But at least he may still get a ride with it, but it's going to be a couple of minutes before he gets away, and I think everybody shoving that up and down in this heat is absolutely exhausted. And straight away over now to... Uh Motorcycle news, Ramsey Hairpin. Yes, anticipation building up, uh, Peter, and uh, the first indication we get is a uh, stirring of spectators. We look down to Stella Maris, and they're beginning to stand onto their feet, indicating we have a rider on his way. We listen, we wait, and now we watch. And it's number four, it's number four, Carl Fogarty. Carl Fogarty now leads on the road. Foggy leads on the road with a Loctite Yamaha. And here are the dicing pair behind. Number two, Steve Ward, with number one, Robert Oldham, stuck right of his exhaust neck. And they are through and away now, up the hill, up toward the series of right-handers at Waterworks. This is Joey, your man, Joey Dunlop, number three, the distinctive yellow Arai helmet on the, uh, the Castor Honda. Gets the pit signal, he knows exactly what his score is now, as indeed does Carl Fogarty. The position equal first was given to Carl. He'll be wondering, of course, who he's equal first with, and his uh, natural reaction would be to think that it would be. And this is Trevor, clever Trevor. Shakes a little bit under the uh, braking on the back end. That left foot just kicks out, and that is nothing to worry about. Spectators around the circuit. And this is McCallan, and he's flying. That's no, Jeffries. It's Nick Jeffries. Well, Kate Hubby is here. Nick Jeffries on the Castle Honda, and that looked very, very rapid indeed. Oh, he's really flying today, is Nick Jeffries, and uh, not even chance for a dab for a two-pointer of a dab, but this is quick, this is McCallan, and he was using all the roads through Stella Maris, McCallan, number, and Robert's all with him, Robert is like, oh, and McCallan almost licks himself off, and that's going to give a chance for Robert to take him down the hill, which he does, McCallan made a little bit of an error, and that's Gable going through, and McCallan all but licked himself off, he had to put a foot down, a quick one point for a dab, and as he dubbed that left foot down to stabilise the machine, then Robert was on the gas with the uh, the iMac Norton. That is number six. That is Ian Locker with the uh, the Scania ITL Yamaha, the Ian Timothy Locker Yamaha, his own private machine, and he away up the hill. But that was a very, very dodgy moment there for Phil McCallan, and it could all have come to naught on perhaps the slowest point on the circuit for Phil McCallan. But Robert Dunlop, he was on the gas. The wee man was accelerating hard, and he took the advantage on the road. Number 12, the next one into sight, that's Bob Jackson, right within those, number 11, Johnny Ray. So uh, he's been passed, Johnny Ray's been passed on the Joe Miller Honda by number 12, Bob Jackson. And we're awaiting on his lop, his lop very shortly. And Fogarty leading by two seconds. Rob Foggy, two seconds from Robert Dunlop. It's two seconds that, and this, this is his lop, this is his lop, surely. No, it's not, it's number 14, that would be Duffers. That's Duffers, then number 16, Mark Farmer. So Farmer is up. The next one will not be his lop, but the next one behind this man should be perhaps number 15, that's Steve Linsdale. And we're looking for his, his lop, that distinctive pink helmet. And this is him, this is him on the white Arbus Shell EBC Norton in the Nazi sees. He just pops the uh, head, he nods to see his position three minus two. Oh, and it sounds crisp. Oh, it sounds sweet, that rotary twin. Well, he uh, probably would take half a lap or two to get into the swing of the Norton. It uh, has a most peculiar characteristic on the overrun. When the throttle is snapped shut, then it doesn't slow it down. It actually projects the machine forward. And that is a little bit disconcerting until the rider is used to that uh, particular riding technique. And as he explained that on Saturday, it took him two laps, in actual fact, and put him offline on a number of the very quick corners. It's just one of those peculiarities of the rotary Norton. But how amazing. The little rotary that started life in a council flat in Litchfield able to put it over the £1 million RVF uh, Hondas, just 1.6 seconds short of that lap record. Number 18 going through there, and that is Tom Knight. So, I look to the times that are being indicated now. Fogarty with a two-second lead over joint second place. Hizzy is now in joint second place with Robert Dunlop. So, the two Nortons are running joint second, two seconds down on Foggy. They, in turn, are nine seconds ahead of Philip McCallan. McCallan is just two seconds ahead of Mark Farmer on the second.
second of the Loctite Yamahas behind him. Three seconds back it is Nick Jeffries. That's no surprise. He's riding very, very well on this uh, so gorgeous sunny senior day here in the Isle of Man. Behind uh, Nick Jeffries then, some nine seconds back, it is Steve Ward. That'd be number two, Steve Ward. Well, the uh, aging juvenile, the recycled teenager, Steve Ward. Number 22 through the hairpin, and that is Sean Harris. And he is a name we're going to hear a lot more of. Sean Harris on the... Uh, Ah, the uh, 750 Suzuki. I'm just pausing to see where Nation slots in. Well, he slots in behind Steve Ward, just Trevor Nation. One second down on Ward, and then it's Joey Dunlap. One second down on Trevor Nation. That is number 28 going through there. Uh, that's Simon Beck. That's Simon Beck on his way, so Mum will be happy to know that he's arrived here at Ramsey Hairpin. A quick resume then. Number four, Fogarty. Two seconds ahead of numbers 10 and 19. That's Dunlop, Robert, and his lot. Nine seconds back, it is then Phil McCallan. Two seconds ahead of Mark Farmer. Farmer in turn, three seconds ahead of number seven, Nick Jeffries, who is nine seconds ahead of number two, Steve Ward. One second ahead of Trevor Nation. One second ahead of Joey Dunlop. Two seconds then, Colin Gable. One second then, it is number 12, Bob Jackson. And then one second back, we have number 15, Steve Linsdale. A hectic Ramsey hairpin an enjoyable Ramsey hairpin and we go back then to the motorcycle news grandstand well number 21 Steve Williams eventually got away but he lost a tremendous amount of time they must have had about three or four attempts to get it to fire up eventually it did and he got away but way way down on time Carl Fogarty leads on the road at signpost corner, followed by number two, Steve Ward, and number one, Robert Holden. And any second now, we should see the sun glinting on the fairing as Carl Fogarty bursts out of the shadows of the Governor's Bridge dip onto Glencrutchery Road at the end of lap one of the Senior TT for 1992. And here he is, Carl Fogarty leading on the roads. What sort of lap times can we expect? He gets the signal board, he crosses the line now. And I make that a lap of about 18 minutes and 34 seconds unofficially. 18 minutes, 34 seconds from a standing start. And that is quick. 18 and a half minutes from a standing start. He's way out in front. Number five, Trevor Nation. And number seven, Nick Jeffries, also indicated at signpost corner. And number three, Joey Dunlop. And here's the next two. It's Holden just ahead of Ward now. Holden ahead of Ward. Numbers nine and ten, McCallan and Robert Dunlop also indicated at signpost corner working out some time differences here we wait for Hislop of course who is not indicated at signpost corner yet and isn't due of course that's number three Joey Dunlop he's through safely and gaps building up between these riders now but the next comes into view streaking along the country road in these absolutely perfect sunny conditions and that's Nick Jeffries number seven and the next machine into our view now, and that is number five, Trevor Nation. Two in close company, the first looks like Dunlop. It is the Black Norton, number 10, ahead of Philip McCallan, so the Norton is ahead of the Honda. And McCallan really tucked in to try and pull back the deficit that uh, Robert Dunlop has opened up on that first lap. The light not on yet for his lap, uh, number 19. Not due yet, of course. Numbers six and eight are also there. That's Ian Locker and Colin Gable. And an opening lap of 18 minutes, 34.2 seconds, 121.90. That was for Fogarty. There's number eight. That's Colin Gable. Number four, Robert Dun uh, Carl Fogarty, an opening lap of 18 minutes, 34.2, 121.90 miles per hour. Uh, number two, Steve Ward, had an opening lap of 19 minutes, 15.4 117.55. Number one, Robert Holden, had an opening lap of 19 minutes, 25, 116.59. And that is number six, Ian Locker. The light is on for his slob. We'll be able to get those times slotted in and work out who is leading at the end of this first lap. Number 10, Robert Dunlop, had an opening lap of 18 minutes, 38.8, 121.40. <laughs> That's Bob Jackson, number 12, followed by number 14, and that is Ian Duffus. And here's Hislop. No, it isn't. It's Mark Farmer. Mark Farmer. It was the red helmet, but this should be Hislop now. The white fairing and the Dayglow pink helmet across the line. That back end really twitching as he turns the full power on. He's followed by number 14 there, Ian Duffus. 
and next along is number 15 and that is Steve Linsdell. Tremendous racing and we'll have a quick commercial break. Carl Fogarty leads Steve Hislop by 1.2 seconds at the end of the first lap. In third place is number 10, Robert Dunlop, 3.4 seconds down on Hislop. In fourth place, Philip McCallum, 10.6 seconds down on Dunlop. In fifth place, number 7, Nick Jeffries, 5.6 seconds down on McCallum. In sixth place, number 16, Mark Farmer, 0.8 of a second down. So it's very close racing. The most important there is 1.2 seconds between first and second at the end of the first lap let's go to Glenn Helen just in time Peter because there is number four the race leader Carl Fogarty he looks over his shoulder as he goes away from us but there's nobody behind him that he can see certainly it's Carl Fogarty out in the lead on the road but only 1.2 seconds ahead of second place man number 19 Steve Hislop it's a great race we've got Norton's in second and third place the next man along should be, I think, Robert Holden, we were told, was uh, ahead of number two, Steve Ward, on the road. But such is the lead that Fogarty has on the road. Here is that, uh, those two. It's two and one this time. It's Ward ahead of Holden. So some uh, good short racing stuff there to excite the fans around the course. Number two, Steve Ward's got it back ahead of Robert Holden on the road. And they are, of course, on the, the lower leaderboard. But number four, flying through here, Carl Fogarty. Sounds very crisp, very neat, as he always is. This is number three, Joey Dunlop on the Castrol Honda. Not quite on the pace in this race. Number seven, fairly close to him, is Nick Jeffries. So uh, won't be long, I suspect, before Nick has got ahead of Joey Dunlop. But uh, very little between it, just 4.6 seconds separating the first three at the end of lap one. Number 10, nine and five, just like that. It's a toe, really, there, that Robert Dunlop's only a matter of inches, almost. Phil McCallan right behind him there. But, of course, with that 10-second uh, starting difference, so that's 1.05. We make it should be about five seconds that uh, number 10, Robert Dunlop, is down on Carl Fogarty. One minute, the starting interval between them. We stop the watch on 1.05. But, of course, we've got uh, another minute and a half or so before we get Hislop due along here. So there's five seconds, the difference, between number four, Fogarty, and number 10, Robert Robert Dunlop at Glen Helen. That was uh, roughly the same as it was. I think it was 4.6 between those two at the grandstand. Number eight now, Colin Gable. Having a great run, Colin, this week, certainly. A good 11th place in the uh, 600 and uh, 15th in the Formula One. But uh, Fogarty really flying, but he's not shaking off totally the challenge of the Nortons there with just five seconds separating. Number four, um, Carl Fogarty from number 10, Robert Dunlop, but we wish to slot in there, of course, number 19, Steve Hislop. So we look down the road, quiet for the moment. We hear another machine. Which one's this? Number six, Ian Locker. Again, Ian on the lower leaderboard, but uh, running well. Ian Locker had some good finishes this week. 12 and 16, very different line there from uh, Mark Farmer. Behind Bob Jackson, number 11 now is Johnny Ray, and here's number 19 really tramping on. Same, very, very wide line, very, very close there. Number 19, Steve Hislop, he always takes it tight round this long left hander, but that's just about the tightest I've seen him uh, in the last two years, I think. Very, very close to the bales and really pushing hard. 14 and 15, we stop the watch on two minutes 30, and if that's right, I would say we couldn't separate them here. Two minutes 30, that was exactly the time difference, and I would say that number four, Carl Fogarty, has been joined in the lead by Steve Hislop at Glen Helen. He's pulled that 1.2 seconds back. It's pretty close, certainly very little to choose between them. And number 10, Robert Dunlop, just five seconds adrift of that, uh, that duel up front. Tremendous racing indeed, and Hislop really trying for this one on that Norton. There's no doubt about that. Determined effort to uh, get a first and not a second place this week, and of course make it a double with last year's win. Number 19, Steve Hislop, from my calculation, certainly just looking at this watch here, may be at the most a second between them, but uh, of course that's uh, just me and the watch, and Ian will confirm those timings very shortly, but uh, certainly Fogarty and Hislop really thrilling the crowds through here, and Dunlop's well in there, and his dice on the road with McCallan is certainly exciting the fans. McCallan stayed with him since Dunlop uh, got past him. They were pretty close together last time at Glen Helen, but Dunlop obviously got ahead round about Ramsey Hairpin, and Phil McCallan's getting a toe from there. So I think we're probably just marginally shaving it at the moment for uh, Carl Fogarty. Uh, it's not a totally accurate. We'll give it a second that Fogarty leads his lop now, Ian Turnbull tells me. And four seconds down on that is number 10, Robert Dunlop. 18 and 20, Tom Knight and Gary Radcliffe. 
but really there's very little to choose between them. So uh, to Glenn Helen on lap two, it's Carl Fogarty leading by one second only now from Steve Hislop. He's four seconds ahead of number 10, Robert Dunlop. Then in fourth place, number nine, McCallan, 11 seconds down on that. In fifth place, number seven, Dick Jeffries, seven seconds down on McCallan. In sixth place, number 16, Mark Farmer, two seconds down on Jeffries. In seventh place, number two, Steve Ward, now 24 seconds adrift of uh, number 16, Mark Farmer. So just about a second between them as we turn you back to the motorcycle news grandstand. Die Lage nach der ersten Runde, Nummer 4, Carl Fogarty, 1,2 Sekunden von Nummer 19, Steve Hislop, der war 3,4 Sekunden von Nummer 10, Robert Dunlop, Mavis. A la fin du premier tour, en tête, le numéro 4, Carl Fogarty, 1 seconde, 2 seconde d'avance sur le numéro 19, Steve Hislop, 3,4 seconde d'avance sur le numéro 10, Robert Dunlop, Peter. And look out for 7th and 8th place men, because in 7th place at the end of the first lap was number 28, Simon Beck, just 11 seconds down on Farmer. And in 8th place was number 34, Jason Griffiths, and Jason Griffiths was just 7 seconds down on Beck. So number 28, Simon Beck in 7th place, number 34, Jason Griffiths in 8th place, followed by number 2, Steve Ward, 5, Trevor Nation, and 3, Joey Dunlop. As we go now to Motorcycle News, Ramsey. Yes, that news will certainly please Simon Beck's mother, who, uh, alas, is not with us on the island but she'll be uh, craning her ear toward the radio picking up the reception across there on the mainland so well done Simon and here's the leader on the road and Foggy is flying oh this is short circuit stuff with a vengeance hey well in, during our Honda Coach tour he said that uh, Stella Maris can be taken in short circuit style and he proved that superbly then the right knee was just scraping the tarmac and he was hard on the gas coming through there at nigh on 110 mile an hour then hard on the anchors that uh, machine incidentally is the one that uh, rob mcelnay the non-playing team captain here in the isle of man that's the one he uses uh, for the motorcycle news uh, super cup uh, meetings on the mainland well we we're waiting on the time then for the uh, the gap it was uh, two minutes and 30 seconds of time differential and an 18 minute 24 second uh, round Ramsey to Ramsey, there's number two, Steve Ward. There is number one, Bob Holden. Well, close partners on the circuit, that is for sure. They cannot be separated. In fact, uh, Bob Holden goes ahead of Steve Ward as they accelerate away out on the run up toward the waterworks section. But what a, a glorious run it is all the way around the 37 and three quarter mile mountain circuit. This has got to be number seven, Nick Jeffries. It is Kate's hubby, Nick, on the uh, Castrol Honda. We're going to check Phil McCullough to see if he's actually got the twin exhaust on as he had on the Formula One winning machine on uh, on Saturday. And he's there ahead, and he's gone back to the single exhaust, gone back to the single exhaust. He's ahead of Robert Dunlop, 9 and 10, on the Norton Asia man, Jerry Dunlop. So the brothers Dunlop are running uh, within, vis well, within visual distance as far as Joey is concerned. But interesting to note for those technically minded that unlike the Castrol Honda that uh, Phil McCallan ran on Saturday in winning the Formula One, and a rider touring up toward us, a rider, and it's Trevor Nation. It looks like the light has gone out on the Oxford. Uh, you know, a lot of smoke coming, and Trevor's going to call it a day. He's going to call in and see us. It's gone bang on Trevor, and he dismounts, and a very disappointed Trevor Nation, and he's going to put it in the water. He's put it in the stream. Well, is he going for an early bath? Well, the bike is certainly going for an early bath. He's taken it off the road, dropped it into the stream, and Trevor dismounts disconsolate Trevor Nation dismounts and what disappointment for the Oxford uh, products rider it was a lot of smoke coming oil smoke that most definitely was and it's obviously gone bang on some part of the circuit here's the next rider up towards us and it is number eight Colin Gable Colin Gable we'll have a word with Trevor in just a moment but as I was saying interesting to note that Phil McCallum for the technically minded has gone back to the four into one exhaust system as opposed to the twin exhaust outlets that he had on uh, on Saturday. Well, we'll let just Trevor Rick, uh, just uh, collect his thoughts. Uh, uh, the man mountain himself, the gentle giant Trevor Nation. Uh, very, and here's his lop. This is Steve Hislop. There is his e, number 19, Steve Hislop. Number 19 on the white. Arbus shall EBC's ahead now. Number 16, Mark Farmer on the road. Okay, both get on the gas and away they steam. Up the hill, number 12 is the next rider, and that is Bob Jackson. Let's have a quick word with Trevor. Trevor. Well, no, he's uh, Trevor. Bob Ford, my old buddy. What went wrong, mate? Well, it started vibrating, and uh, I think it split his crankcases. It's absolutely pouring out oil. Well, there we go. And that's Ian Locker that uh, is on a bit of a wide run, and uh, number 11 going through there, and that is Johnny Ray. So, where did it go bang on you? Uh, not long down the road, actually. Just uh, I noticed it breaking for uh, Ramsey there, and. Uh, you know, I know it's a vibration, I look down, it's covered in oil, so, uh, you know. That, that's it for the day, early bath for the bike and an early bath for you. Yeah, put the bike in the river in case it caught fire. So. Well done, Trevor. Let's have a look at these times and look to the times. And
and it's important because his lob leads. Hizzy has got the lead. The White Tornado is ahead now of the Red Devil in second place. It's Hizzy from Foggy by two seconds. Number 19, Steve Hislop, two seconds ahead of Carl Fogarty. And in third place, it's the second of the Nortons. It is the High McNaughton of Robert Dunlop. So the filling of the, Dun of the Norton sandwich is Fogarty. Hislop, two seconds ahead of Fogarty. Ten seconds back, it's uh, Dunlop Jr. Then nine seconds back, it's Phil McKellen. And he holds a nine-second advantage ahead of Nick Jeffries. Well, what a ride this is by Nick Jeffries. He's against some very celebrated uh, opposition there. And Nick is holding his head up high. And he is there in fifth place. So Hislop has now got his nose in front. And that really uh, was very much as I thought it would be coming in toward the second lap. Possibly he was going to take a couple of laps to uh, bed down to the handling characteristics and the motor technique of the uh, Norton. And he equals the lap record from Ramsey to Ramsey. He equals his own lap record at 18 minutes, 20 seconds. So for sure, on the final lap, the flying lap, we are bound to see unknown territory being broken here in the Isle of Man. 18 minutes, 20, Ramsey to Ramsey for uh, Steve Hislop on the, uh, well, that's Ron Haslam's Norton, would you believe? Ron Haslam's uh, Norton, but being painted white. There's Tom Knight, number 18, ahead of number 20, Gary Radcliffe. And uh, yes, it's the Norton that uh, was written recently for those of you watching your TV boxes uh, by Terry Reimer. So it's the Hasler machine, the Reimer rode it, and now it's in the hands of uh, Stevie Hislop. This is number 28, and we put him on the leaderboard. That's Simon Beck, tall, lanky Simon Beck. We won't get a chance to shuffle him in because at the moment, Dave uh, Phillips has just got the top five, and I'll recap on those. It is Steve Hislop, two seconds ahead of number four, Carl Fogarty, 10 seconds ahead of Robert Dunlop, nine seconds ahead of Phil McCallan, who is nine seconds ahead of number seven and that is Nick Jeffries nine seconds back on Jeffries is number 16 and that is the second Loctite Yamaha rider and that is uh, Mark Farmer so with that news back to the Motor Soccer News Grandstand You're listening to coverage of the 1992 Senior TT Race brought to you by the Toolbox and Draper Tools the Toolbox stockiest of all the tools a biker needs at Church Road Port Erin and news from Ramsey that number 28 Simon Beck is in 7th place, 17 seconds down on Mark Farmer. Once again, we have to remind people around the course, please do not use uh, cameras with automatic flash. And here's Carl Fogarty into the pits now. Jeff? Yes, coming down to the stop box, nice and steady. Remarkably steady. Now accelerates from the stop box to the pits here and just pulls up to a halt. And he wants a drink. Petrol going in, and he's two seconds behind his lap. We heard at Ramsey Hairpin, but we've had the mountain climb since then. And this is remarkably composed. All right, Bob. Yeah, two seconds. You are minus two on Steve. Steve. Petrol comes up to the top level now, and the cap is closed. This is an excellent pit stop here with no flappability whatever. And she lights up at the second attempt. And of course, it's going to be quite some time before Hislop gets here, two and a half minutes on corrected time, and we'll have in next, I should think, Nick Jeffries and then McCallan, and indeed it's Steve Ward and Holden, I meant of the top six. Of course, these two are just outside that, and they're absolutely alongside each other here. And it's Holden who pulls in here first, but then it's Nick Jeffries, and he is in fifth position at the moment. And comes into Neil Tuxworth's pit with the Castrol Honda Britain machine. Now coming down in is McCallum and Robert Dunlop. Absolutely side by side in the stop box. McCallum pulls up behind Jeffries here. Boys are all right, Nick. A bit more. More cleaning of the visor required. McCallum here then in fourth position. You're in fourth You're in fourth place. And then second down the leader. Fog Hislop, Hislop's leading, Fogarty second. Hurry up, Robbie third, and you're 20. Hurry up! That's enough, that's enough! Yeah, oh, the pressure's on, all right. He's Joey now, then. And there's problems at the front end for McCallan. Something being looked at at the front end. He's Joey. Jeff, and McCallan it's also is a stopped. Change, it's a change of wheel for Robert Dunlop, number 10, as well. Change yes, of wheel. Yes, but it's McCallan who's in difficulties here, and Joey at the back looks as if he's in retirement. To me, he's taking his gloves off. Robert is away. You can't be at both ends at once, I'm afraid, and well spotted. Joey's and Joey looks as if he's packing in. There's trouble here with his machine, and is this a retirement? It certainly looks that way. Yes, he's taking his helmet off. There's something amiss at the rear end. And that is a shame after a fabulous week. What's up, Joey? No, I, I have trouble, I can't see. 
He's his lap now then. The end of that lap, we made a Steve Hislop plus three seconds over Carl Fogarty. Three New seconds. wheel going in this too. New wheel going in. Everything else all right? Yeah. Sits back and can he win it with the note? And out comes the wheel. Screen clean. Fuel going in. It's, uh, it's That's okay. It's good. The adjustment seemed to have worked, Barry. New back wheel in. Lashes it up with the torque wrench, off the stand, and off we go. The adjustments seem to have worked well, Barry Simmons. Sorry, uh, Jeff, I couldn't hear a word you said then. I'm just saying the adjustments you've made seem to be working. Yes, and the temperature's nicely low. OK, he's farmer. Blasting away from the pit stop, but Joey a retirement, and he's Johnny Ray, pulling in at the top end. Bob Jackson also in the pits, but... Sad sight of Joey Dunlop's machine being wheeled away. Number 14, Ian Duffus in the stop box. And Ian Locker, Jackson away. Duffus in the centre. He's Locker now. Locker is shaking his head, though. And Steve, uh, Tim O'Hanlon should have the exit times now for uh, Hislop and Fogarty. Well, with the tyre change for Hislop, Fogarty now leads Hislop by five seconds and Robert Dunlop a further 17 seconds back in third. Well, it's closed it up, but it may well be worth it. It could be a long-term strategy. Here's Ray pushing off. So Fogarty inherits the lead, but McCallan's machine is also stricken at the pit, so two of the Castrol Honda Britain machines are out on the, very, the end of the very first lap. And you're tempted to say drama indeed, but it's an overworked cliché. But it looks as if McCallan is still hoping to continue, although he has his helmet off. It's the front end that's the snag with it. What's up, Phil? Well, plus the radiator. Stone through it? It looks like it, yes, but we'll try to seal it and get going again. Radwell job, is it? Uh, no, well, we'll have to art later from the outside. Oh, what a shame. You're going well. Ah, I was just playing a study the first lap because I knew the race would be won in the second half of it. And... Ah, well, well, we're back next year. They can't take the Formula One away from you, you know? Well, I've still got it. I'm happy enough. <laughs> Two wins. Shame, though. What's conditions like? Ah, it's good out there. It's hot. You're still hoping to continue still, then? Well, yes. OK, there we are, then. That's the pits action from the first pit stops as the other riders stream in. We now go over ahead of the race to Glen Helen and Morris Mosley at the Motorcycle News Comedy Point. Yes, thanks, Jeff. So, uh, an advantage now for this man, number four, Carl Fogarty. Safely through Glen Helen, uh, looks round again, but there's got to be nobody behind him following those pit stops. Takes a totally different line to Hislop, virtually up the middle of the road there for Carl Fogarty, where, of course, Hislop takes it very wide indeed, and certainly did on the last lap. So five seconds the advantage following the uh, changes of rear wheel. And amazing what action you get down there in the pits. It's great excitement listening to Jeff describing it all there. But disappointment for number three, Joey Dunlop. And, of course, problems for number nine, Philip McCallan. And, of course, that's going to make a difference because he was circulating virtually nose to tail with Robert Dunlop for the whole of those two laps. So Robert, of course, will have a, a little bit of clear uh, air between him now and the other riders, but uh, he's 17 seconds down in that third place. But it's going to be a cracker, there's no doubt about it. Uh, we have only got two laps gone out of six, only a third distance so far. There's plenty left in this race, and of course the timings towards the end are going to be absolutely astonishing, I'm sure. So provided there are no mechanical problems for uh, people like Fogarty and uh, Robert Dunlop and, of course, uh, Steve Hislop, we're going to get a real cracker. So, number two now, Steve Ward following the pit stops. Not as close to this man as he was, but one and seven absolutely together. Robert Holden and Nick Jeffries. Jeffries looks around the outside as they go up to Hugs Craig Willies. And uh, I think he's certainly got the measure there of number one, Robert Holden. Nick Jeffries having a great ride, lying in something like fifth place, but he'll be moving up a slot with the problems for Philip McCallan. And here's number... Number 10, a little bit of a twitch there for Robert Dunlop and to safely through here with that new rear wheel in and it'll be interesting to see what difference that will be. 127.9, 128 seconds, 1 minute 28 seconds was the growing time there for Robert Dunlop. So if we take off, uh, let me see, number 4, Carl Fogarty started at 30. 
So that will give quite an advantage there to number four, of course, Carl Fogarty, but it's Hislop we're waiting for. Number 19, Steve Hislop. Tremendous racing indeed. So can the Nortons make it now with the new rear wheel? Only time will tell. Whilst I've got an opportunity, could I just give a message to a Jeffrey Quinn to say your friends have hit Glen Helen, whatever that might mean. Meet you there later. Just arrived. That's a message from Jeffrey Quinn. So McKellen, I hear, is a retirement at the pits now, unable to resolve that radiator problem, so disappointment there for Philip McKellen, but already got two wins this week. But here's number 19. Let's see what his line's like this time. Same again, not quite as wide as last time. Manny's just about to stay inside the white line there, but uh, he's through 2 minutes 36. We make it on the clock. So a 2 minute 30 second starting time. We make it about 6 seconds. The advantage for number 4, Fogarty, has extended it by 1, I think. But Ian will confirm that. 16 and 8 and 15. That's Mark Farmer, Colin Gable and Steve Linsdale safely through Glen Helen for the third time. But the race leader is number 4, Carl Fogarty. I made it about 6 seconds his advantage, but we'll confirm that in a moment. But a tremendous performance indeed. But if he's pulled one back since the pits course, uh, having exited the pits, he will still be a little bit slower getting into uh, racing trim. Number 12 there, Bob Jackson. Steady Bob Jackson certainly uh, had some great finishes this week. Seventh in the Formula One, 13th in the 125, sixth in the junior, and fifth in the 600, in the 600 Super Sport. So number 12, Bob Jackson circulating well. But there'll still be, of course, another pit stop to come at the end of lap four, and all can change. But the race leader is number four, Carl Fogarty. We'll give you the other positions in just a moment. Just looking down now, number four leads number 19, Hislop, by six seconds, as I suggested here. In third place, number 10, uh, Robert Dunlop. He's 23 seconds now adrift in third place following that tyre change. In fourth place, number 7, Dick Jeffries. Number 14 through is Ian Duffus. So the news at Glen Helen on lap 3 is a six-second lead for number 4, Carl Fogarty, ahead of number 19, Steve Hislop. With that, back to the Motorcycle News Grandstand. Nach der zweiten Runde führt Nummer 19, Steve Hislop, 2,8 Sekunden für Nummer 4, Carl Fogarty. 14,8 Sekunden vor Nummer 10, Robert Dunlop. Mavis. Les temps chronométrés après deux tours en tête le numéro 19, Steve Hislop. 2,8 secondes d'avance sur le numéro 2, sur le numéro 4, Carl Fogarty. 14,8 secondes d'avance sur le numéro 10, Robert Dunlop. Peter. An additional retirement, number 43, Keith Buckley, came off of the 26 milestone. The rider is perfectly okay, but is retired. And the winner of the Ellis Brown Prize for the best turned out rider and machine, a prize of £100, is number 61, Johnny Barton. He's got an extra £100. It was judged by the scoreboard auditor, so John Barton has won the Ellis Brown £100 for the best turned out rider and machine in the senior, and I just look, he'd lapped at 19 minutes 54 seconds and almost on cue, his light is on to come in at the end of his second lap. We go to the Ramsey and the Motorcycle News Box. Yes, as we await the arrival of the leader on the road and leader on corrected time, number four Carl Fogarty. Let's not forget, of course, that uh, one anticipates that Carl will have to change his rear boot and that will happen at the next pit stop. Uh, and one really wouldn't see him going right the way through with the Dunlop. Here he comes. Oh, he's trying. There's no finer sight than seeing Carl Fogarty and Steve Hislop in the office doing the job that they do so perfectly. Oh, and it sounds so, Chris, and a vicious rear wheel snake as he went away right-handed up to that first right-hander, the first of the three right-handers that go into Ward Waterworks. Well, it curves away right, then slightly left, then into that right, and then to the tighter right before onto the sort of double S's that will lead them on up toward the gooseneck. But uh, he is absolutely wringing every ounce of speed out of that Rob McElnay Loctite Yamaha and sticking to the task as befits the Loctite man. The watch moves on with some 34 seconds. We've got two minutes and 30 30 seconds or thereabouts before number 19 Hizzy Hislop comes into sight. Well, as we were saying, uh, we would anticipate that Foggy will be going into the pits uh, to change the boot at the next uh, pit stop. We may get an indication here at Ramsey. He may point down to the rear boot and that will be to warn the boys across there that he wants that tyre changed. Psychologically, it's probably good that the Nortons have done it early on. They've now got four laps uh, to run with the uh, tyres. They have no, should have no problem there with their tyres and they've got four laps to make up any deficit that they lost uh, after to lap uh, number two in the pit. So uh, might be a good move for the Nortons. We will see it'll all juggle itself up again when we have the next uh, Gasoline Alley uh, extravaganza. Oh, and here's a dicing duo, and it's uh, number seven, Nick Jeffries, on the inside of number two, uh, Steve Ward. Well, the grand old boys, the... Uh, the uh, and Steve Ward misses a gear, Steve Ward misses a gear, and that has allowed Nick Jeffries to pull away. 
away. And number one, Bob Holden, uh, is uh, hoving into sight with them. There's number 10, Robert Dunlop. Got the dark visor on. Well, almost could do with the bathing suit and the suntan oil. Such are the conditions here at Ramsey. And uh, Robert Dunlop, third on corrected time when we heard from Morris across there at Glen Helen, some 23 seconds down on the flying kilt, Steve Hislop. And we're awaiting on Steve Hislop, to, uh, who will be coming into sight uh, in about, uh, well, about 30 seconds or 35 seconds or so. Uh, for Fogarty is 31 seconds ahead of Dunlop, where we've got to shuffle into that equation number 19. And that is the man himself, Steve Hislop, resident of the Isle of Man, resident of Union Mills, and uh, well, uh, will not take advantage of the fact he's out on the circuit uh, because he won the karaoke. But uh, an official protest has been lodged by the team uh, Ramsey commentary squad. But uh, that will be taken to a higher jury at the next meeting of the European Commission, I'm sure. Well, it uh, should be on his way now. 2:25. The next one should be uh, Hislop. Here's Hislop. There's his Hislop. 2:28, 2:30. He's pulling it back a little bit. That's 2:31, 2:30. And it's 232.83, so I'm making three seconds down. He's pulled three seconds back on Fogarty. He is now minus three seconds on Fogarty. His lop is just three seconds down on Carl Fogarty. He's pulled three seconds back on the run through, well, the most difficult part of the section for my money is the section that the Irish boys love on the lowlands. But his he is now going up onto the wide open spaces where he and Foggy are most at home. This is Mark Farmer on the second of the Loctite Yamahas, quietly getting on with the job, not super spectacular, but highly efficient. And it's crisp, there's no worries there, no problems there for the boys. This is Colin Gable, the privateer Colin Gable from Hampshire. Abel Gable. Well, he, uh... Yes, he looked back at that as if to say, did you see that one? It was a rather peculiar line. It was a line that I last saw at Paddington Station rather than here at Ramsey Hairpin, but it worked. This is uh, number 12. This will be Bob Jackson, seventh on Saturday. Bob Jackson with a natty line in new leathers, the black, the white, the yellow, and the touch of red contrasting. And uh, as we heard from our fashion correspondent on Monday, uh, he really does look a picture. Bob Jackson then seventh uh, on, uh, on Saturday, and uh, he is on the lower leaderboard. In fact, on the lower leaderboard last time around, we could go down to two, four, six, eight, uh, ninth place. We had um, Jason Griffiths. Tenth place was Bob Holden. Then it was Bob Jackson and then Steve Lindsdell on the leaderboard. That was the last time. I stress the last time, but for the uh, pit board men out on the circuit, two, four, six, two, four, six, seventh was Simon Beck, eighth was Steve Ward, ninth Jason Griffiths, tenth Bob Holden, eleventh Bob Jackson, and twelfth was Steve Lindsdell. That was the last time here at Ramsey Hairpin. Here's Johnny Ray. Number 11, Johnny Ray, not singing in the rain, but uh, delightful in the sun. And at number 14, Ian Duff as Scotsman on the uh, ZXR Kawasaki. And I can tell you then the running order here at Ramsey is number four, Carl Fogarty, three seconds ahead of Steve Hislop, who is now 28 seconds ahead of uh, Robert Dunlop. Dunlop in turn, 18 seconds ahead of number seven, Nick Jeffries, who is 11 seconds ahead of number 16, Mark Farmer. Then 40, 40 oh seconds back, we have number two, Steve Ward. 12 seconds back on him, number one Bob Holden, 18 seconds back on Holden is number 12 Bob Jackson but 24 seconds ahead of Colin Gable. Gable 8 seconds ahead of Ian Duffus who is 24 seconds ahead of number 11 Johnny Ray and that's it then back to the Motorcycle News Grandstand. You're listening to coverage of the 1992 Senior TT Race brought to you by the Toolbox and Draper Tools. The Toolbox, stockiest of all the tools a biker needs at Church Road, Port Erin. The light is on for Fogarty. He should be with us very shortly indeed. We're looking up to our right out of the Depot Governor's Bridge, and here he is. Carl Fogarty, number four, steaming, gets the signal board, telling him his exact position. He crosses the line now. No more lights are on, I think, Jeff. Quick word down there, Jeff. Yes, the same tyre, of course, in, which he probably will change at the next pit stop. But the interesting thing is, will the Norton change a second wheel at their second pit stop? Because there was a large chunk out of the rear tyre of Robert Dunlop's, uh, sorry, Steve Hislop's machine at the end of the Formula One, and I don't think they're going to chance it. But it's also interesting to see, of course, that notwithstanding that wheel change, his he is catching Fogarty by four seconds from here to Ramsey Hairpin. So I think the Nortons will change a further wheel at their second pit stop, and I think that the Yamahas, of course, now will be coming to the fourth lap on that same tyre, and his lap may well retake the advantage. 
Okay, let's uh, keep an eye out for that. Well, <laughs> it's amazing that uh, number four, Carl Fogarty, is so far out in front. His lap that time, including a pit stop, was 19 minutes, 4.4, 118.68. His average for the three laps, 121.05, which is just marginally slower than the absolute race record at 121.09. The lights are on, Robert Dunlop, Nick Jeffries, and Robert Holden all indicated at signpost corner. We started the watch, two minutes and 30 seconds separated. Number 19, Hislop, and number four, Robert Dunlop at the start of the race. And it's coming up now, since Fogarty crossed the line, to one minute and 20 seconds now. So the light not on for Hislop, not due, of course, but Fogarty is way, way out, miles literally ahead on the road. There's the second place man, and that is number seven, Nick Jeffries. And he's followed by the Norton. Listen to this. At full crack. He's followed by number one. That's uh, Robert Holden. They're all safely through. The light is on for number 19, Steve Hislop. It's coming up to one minute and 50 seconds now since Carl Fogarty crossed the line. One minute and 55. Remember, the starting difference between them was two minutes and 30 seconds. Anything less than 2 minutes and 30 seconds, Hislop is leading. Anything more than 2.30, and Fogarty is leading. It's 2 minutes and 10 seconds now. The light's been on a little while. He'll be the next machine to come bursting into our view. 2 minutes and 15 seconds. No sign of him yet. 2 minutes and 20 seconds. It could still be very, very close indeed to 25, 26, here he is, 27, 28, 29, 30. He crosses the line now, I stop my watch, and I would make it about 1.2 seconds. 1.2 seconds, the advantage still with Carl Fogarty, but only just, only just. Uh, Robert Dunlop had a lap at 116.45 on that uh, third lap. Nick Jeffries, 115.75. And number one, Robert Holden, 113.77. A quick commercial break. The official difference, Fogarty leads Hislop by one second at the end of lap three. And number 10, Robert Dunlop, 35.8 seconds down on Hislop. Jeffries is fourth, Farmer is fifth, and uh, the battle is really out in front. Exactly one second between first and second as we go to MCN. Yes, indeed, Peter. What will it be here? It was six here last time, three at Ramsey, one at the grandstand. So Hislop really cracking on, but here's the race leader, number four. Ahead there of number 21, Steve Williams, who started at the back of the grid, but number four, safely through, Carl Fogarty, and we have some uh, two and a half minutes to wait. Another of the back markers, number 68, Martin Grine, circulating, but clearly a lap adrift. 18 minutes, 25 seconds, we make number four, Carl Fogarty, lap to lap at Glen Helen. Number four, Fogarty, 18 minutes, 25, a flying lap at Glen Helen on the last lap for number four, Carl Fogarty, with that advantage of just one second. Will it remain so? The clock ticks on, some 30 seconds now gone. We'll have a few riders in between there, and one of those is number seven, Nick Jeffries, who's going very well, holding on to that fourth place. The other Norton of Robert Dunlop will be with us very shortly indeed, as will uh, Steve Ward and Robert Holden still circulating well. And, of course, at the end of this, we have the pit stops again and speculation regarding the change of the rear wheels and what action there's going to be in Gasoline Alley for Jeff to describe to us at the end of this lap. But let's bear in mind the race is only just over halfway and what an absolute cracker it is. The best part of three laps still to go and tremendous. That last lap is really going to be something else in perfect sunshine here on the Isle of Man. It's number four, Carl Fogarty safely through, having overtaken one or two of the back markers. We await the arrival of the chasing pack and number 19, of course, uh, Steve Hislop, just that one second down at the grandstand. The clock ticks on, one minute and 20 seconds have elapsed already. Uh, certainly number 19, Hislop, is pulling it out over uh, teammate Robert Dunlop the, uh, on the Norton there, but Norton's in second and third place at the moment. Some 36 seconds adrift, though, for Robert Dunlop as he's uh, dropping a little bit of time, certainly. But here they come, number seven ahead on the road there of number 10, Robert Dunlop. So Nick Jeffries, about 20 yards ahead on the road third and fourth place uh, respectively number 10 Robert Dunlop in uh, third place number seven Nick Jeffries in fourth place this is number one Robert Holden on the lower end of the leaderboard Robert we had him in round about 10th place on the last lap so the time ticks on number four has already been gone just over two minutes now some 30 seconds or so before we should get number 19 Steve Hislop through here 
Two minutes and 10 seconds have elapsed now. Some 20 seconds to go before we expect the arrival of number 19, Steve Hislop. And who will be leading here at Glen Helen on the fourth lap? Six seconds here last time, but we know it was down to one at the uh, grandstand. So it could be number 19, Steve Hislop. Here he is. He crosses the line now, or crosses the marker that we look at. Two minutes, 28.6. The advantage is therefore with number 19, Hislop. Hislop is ahead here at Glen Helen on lap four by just about a second. So he's pulled a further couple of seconds out. I'm sure Ian will confirm that to me in a moment. But we make number 19, Hislop, the race leader on corrected time here at Glen Helen by one second from number four, Carl Fogarty. Hislop certainly seems to have the measure of it. He's pulled it consistently back throughout the whole of that lap. The gap has now opened up to third place to 40 seconds, so the first two really going for it. Fogarty, one second down now on number 19, Steve Hislop, who leads the race at Glen Helen. In fourth place, number 10, Robert Dunlop, 40 seconds down on uh, Fogarty. And in fifth place of those through so far, number seven, Nick Jeffries. Here's another man on the leaderboard, Mark Farmer. Also on the Loctite Yamaha, so uh, he's going well. 18 minutes, 18, we make that flying lap for number 19, Steve Hislop. 18 minutes, 18 seconds, some seven seconds quicker on that flying lap than number four, Carl Fogarty. A tremendous performance indeed, and certainly the last lap looks as though the, uh, <laughs> the record is bound to go, I would say, almost certainly if they carry on at this pace. And certainly the average speed only being just marginally short of the uh, race average speed. At 121.05, that is also almost certain to be shattered. Slotting into fifth place is number 16, Mark Farmer. This is number eight, Colin Gable, running well. Number 16, Mark Farmer, 11 seconds down on number seven, Nick Jeffries. Number 12 through is Bob Jackson. So the news at Glen Helen is that the leader is now Steve Hislop, one second ahead of number four, Carl Fogarty. Fogarty, 40 seconds ahead of number 10, Robert Dunlop. Robert Dunlop, 28 seconds ahead of number seven, Nick Jeffries. Nick Jeffries, 11 seconds ahead of number 16, Mark Farmer. And with that, back to the Motorcycle News Grandstand. You're listening to coverage of the 1992 Senior TT Race brought to you by the Toolbox and Draper Tools. The Toolbox, stockiest of all the tools a biker needs at Church Road, Port Erin. Nach der dritten Runde führte Nummer 4, Carl Fogarty. Eine Sekunde von Nummer 19, Steve Hislop. Da war 35,8 Sekunden von Nummer 10, Robert Dunlop. Nee, nee. Merci Barbara. Après trois tours en tête, le numéro 4, Carl Fogarty, une seconde d'avance sur le numéro 19, Steve Hislop, 35,8 secondes d'avance sur le numéro 10, Robert Dunlop en troisième. Peter. Well, at the end of lap three, we have in sixth place number 34, Jason Griffith, some 58 seconds down on number 16, Mark Farmer, and just 0.6 second, of a second ahead of number 28, Simon Beck, who in turn is just about 0.8 of a second ahead of number one, so a close battle for sixth place between 34, 28, and one. Number two, Steve Ward, retired at the bungalow. Number 22, Sean Harris, off at Hilbury. He's been seen by the doctor, he's okay. 30, David Morris, and 56, Stuart Raybould, both retired here at the pits. So that's a dice to look out for for sixth place between number 34, Jason Griffiths, number 28, Simon Beck, and number one, Robert Holden. Just 1.4 seconds covering them, three of them, and they're battling it out for sixth, seventh, and eighth places as we go to Motorcycle News, Ramsey. Well, nice to hear that Sean Harris is okay, but that certainly gives a new uh, dimension to uh, Kiwis can't fly, doesn't it? Hillbury, that must be about 145 mile an hour through that right-hander. Well, the noise grows, and it should be foggy, and it is indeed and we can stop the watch and he will start the watch so to the well he uh, is getting on the gas very very early and a little bit of a shake from the rear end we listen to the exhaust note what do you think phil thumbs up sounds okay bit iffy you reckon slightly iffy what on the uh, acceleration away um, slightly muffling well the boys over in uh, pitch lane over with rob mcelney it uh, the indications were it did not sound quite as crisp as it did on the early laps but that may be uh, to do with the silencing or it may do with the uh, uh, hitchens untrained ear i'll leave that with you rob to sort out but i would guess that he'll be coming in for a boot on this occasion a rear dunlop boot uh, as uh, this will be his last or his last scheduled pit stop for the final two laps and of course the last lap is the one 
on that we look for the high speed. Uh, remember that he'll be slowing down to go into the stop box, then take on gas and whatever. Then he will be accelerating away, so that will be in effect a standing start. But the last lap he'll go thundering through, and then we should, uh, uh, all things being equal, from either Foggy or Hizzy, see a new lap record. We heard from Morris that it was an 18 minute, uh, what was it, 18 minute uh, 18 from uh, Glen Helen to Glen Helen. That's not the quickest we've seen around the Isle of Man, of course. We look back to last year when we had an 18-12, the 1812 overdraw during practice from Steve Hislop, 18-12.2, and I think just about six seconds behind that was uh, Carl Fogarty, both of them on the multi-million dollar uh, RVFs. Well, this, uh, the Norton, it's the power unit that started its life in the uh, council flat at Litchfield, and, uh, well, who would have thought that this little event invention that uh, people said had no future in the world of motorcycling would uh, put it over the uh, lap record as held previously by the £1 million plus RVFs. This is Robert Dunlop. This is Robert. Number 10, Robert Dunlop, followed by Nick Jeffries. 10, Robert Dunlop on the High Mac Norton. And uh, number 7, Nick Jeffries. And Robert just lifts her on the inside of a back marker as they uh, thunder away up the hill on toward uh, the waterworks. The six-speed Norton up against the six-speed uh, uh, Honda there. If you get a careful stock uh, on the slower corners and look to the exhaust system of the Norton, it looks almost as if it's a two-into-one beneath the uh, rear swinging arm. In fact, that second smaller pipe, as we'll just take Bob Holden through, number one, Bob Holden. He's lost his travelling companion, number two, Steve Ward. We heard that uh, he'd called it today uh, on uh, that last lap. Uh, and, oh, and a rip-off being taken off for Steve Hislop. What a place to pull a rip-off coming through Stella Maris. Dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. One-handed through Stella Maris and uh, pulling a rip-off off. And that, I reckon, has increased it to about six seconds. I reckon that has increased it to about six seconds. Seven seconds. It's now gone up to seven seconds, the advantage. Steve Hislop has now got a seven-second advantage over Carl Fogarty because it stopped at 2.23. Take that from 2.37 seconds is the lead now to Steve Hislop from Carl Fogarty. But what nonchalance, Nate, nonchalance the wrong word, what bravery, and uh, it's really a difficult uh, choice, I suppose. Where on earth do you find the place around the TT course to get rid of these rip-offs? And uh, we saw him just pull one away with his left hand as he uh, came cranked over through the Stella, Stella Maris right-hander. And that's an 18 minutes, 15, 18, 15, Ramsey to Ramsey, he's getting quicker. Well, 18, 15, it's almost the musical 18, 12, but not quite there. Well, get the old Ramsey uh, uh, karaoke squad if Julie can pop along and join us and we'll be doing the 1812 a little bit later on as our finale rendition but uh, Hislop then on his way some seven seconds ahead of uh, Carl Fogarty but it may well change and could increase because Foggy we anticipate will be taking on the rear boot here's number 16 Mark Farmer on the second of the locked on Yamahas and uh, yes he's pointed to the rear boot he's coming in Rob Mack he's coming in he wants a rear tire Mark Farmer will be coming in. He points to the rear Dunlop boot and that a clear indication that he will be uh, coming in for a tyre change. We, incidentally, we didn't get any indication from Carl Fogarty. Well, there again, I suppose he had other things on his mind thundering up the hill here at about 120 mile an hour to knock it down to 30. I suppose he needed both hands on the bars. But it's a fair guess that Foggy will be wanting a boot, but no mistaking the fact that the Ulsterman, the Crawley-based Ulsterman, Mark Farmer, will be coming in for a new rear tyre. Well, Hislop, seven seconds ahead of Carl Fogarty, who is 44 seconds ahead of Robert Dunlop, 32 seconds ahead of Nick Jeffries. Mark Farmer is running fifth on the leaderboard, some 12 seconds down on Nick Jeffries, and one minute, 15 seconds ahead of uh, Bob Holden. And that gets my prize for this sweet, the swiftest and neatest approach and cornering here at uh, Ramsey Hairpin by number eight, Colin Gable. That was a superb effort by Colin Gable, and he is on the lower leaderboard. We made him... Uh, 11th last time here at Ramsey. But that's it then. Hislop leading by seven seconds. Back to the Motorcycle News Grandstand. Well, there's activity down in the Loctite Yamaha pit because number four, Carl Fogarty, is indicated at signpost corner. Let's take a rundown from ninth position at the end of lap three. In ninth place, we had number 12, Bob Jackson, followed by number eight, Colin Gable, number 14, Ian Duffus, number 11, Johnny Ray, and, and followed by number 20, and that is Gary Ratcliffe, the local lad in 13th place, number 39, Derek Young in 14th place, and number 15, Steve Linstall, who has since retired in 15th position. But now, here he is. He is Carl Fogarty coming into the pits. Let's join Jeff. Yes, yeah, almost for certain a rear wheel change this time, and of course, he's only got two laps to do on this wheel. As against the four, he's already done it. Might well be a softer compound. Tremendously controlled stop the last time, and this time it's similar too. Calls for another drink, and that wheel coming out in a moment or two. 
Petrol going in and the visor wiped. Nothing being said whatever, and that alone is something, but they are not changing it. They are not changing the wheel. Going to go for six laps, apparently, on the one tire. Extraordinary. It could be a winning tactic. On goes the cap, and away he goes. Well, now, what about that then? There's a bit of foxing for you. Fogarty away on his fifth lap on the same tyre. And Will Norton now decide not to bother with theirs to try to uh, level that gap out. Tactics coming into it here. And, of course, Norton's there. Will not be looking too chuffed at the lack of delay for Fogarty. On that pit stop, for sure, they gained an advantage there. They put the stand under it. That was a nice one as well, but decided not to bother. Jeff, including the tire. pit stop, he lapped in 18 minutes, 30.2, 122.34. Okay, he's the rest of the cavalry now, but this rider not stopping in the pits this occasion. Steve Lindsdell, unfortunately, a retirement there, just gone through, looking a bit unhappy. Lots of water about the place and oil on the left-hand side as well. As we wait, the next uh, group, of course, are likely to contain Nick Jeffries and company. And you can't believe how long it seems in such a situation for the Norton team to be waiting the arrival of their man. Just looking on the boards, in fact, uh, Robert Dunlop and Nick Jeffries and now Steve Hislop all have their lights on as being through signpost corner. So those top men will be at the top end of the pits. Nick Jeffries going well and Robert Dunlop, no disgrace either on the Nortons. And here they come and they're together. Coming into the pits together now. So we'll get Robert in for this stop. Keep your toes in, Jeffrey. Nick at the top. He's Robert with the other Norton though. And will they change this wheel again too? It looks likely, yes, they are examining it. And indeed the wheel is coming out. And Robert going to change his crash helmet as well, which is a bit of a fiddly do, but he seems to like that. And I've got to explain that changing them to get a better visor rather than changing them because they don't like the helmet. And here is his lap already. The two Nortons are going to be at the pits together here and take cover. Here is his lap. Have you got an interim time there, Peter? Yeah, eight second advantage for his lap. Eight, eight seconds it is for his Cleans the visor, Robert Dunlop's machine, and they're not going for a change this time. The chain's a little bit slack on this. My word it is. The scrutiny is a little bit concerned about it. There's Nick Jeffries away. Robert Dunlop's machine still at the pits, and Norton have decided that they're not going to bother either. They can't chance it. There's Robert sneaking through. He gets away when he's got a new wheel in. They can't get the cap shot. The filly cap will not shot. Don't panic. Slow down. That's nice. it. That's Barry. Off we go then. Two laps to go. Well, I reckon that'll put Fogarty back into the lead now, but Tim O'Hanlon will have timed the gaps in between as Robert Holden gets away. And what's the effect of that, Tim? Fogarty leads by four seconds. So neither wheels change there, and Fogarty four seconds ahead. And, uh, well, his, he's got to catch him now in two laps. He will do, of course, but that chain looked a little bit worrying to me. It was quite slack. Well, that's quite something in the Glen Helen times going to be it, but he does have two laps, and if his lap can do what he's done before, he should win the race as Farmer comes down the pit lane now. Clutch screaming as he accelerates away in that very high bottom gear. Quite different tactics, and would Norton have changed that wheel if the Yamaha would have done theirs? I reckon they would. And I reckon they were left with no alternative, but his lap now has to ride four laps on his tyre, of course. He's uh, changed at the end of the second lap. And he's done two, and he's got two more to do on his. So in actual fact, to be fair, that will balance it out exactly. Yamaha did the first four, then put a new wheel in for the last two. Nortons have done it precisely the reverse order. And I would say it's better to have the tyre done uh, at the, for the start of the last two laps, if possible, there's Farmer. You hear the power torque wrench going on to put the back wheel nut on. And he both starts too. Farmer away then. And going well. Jeff, the news on that lap is that Steve Hislop lapped in 18 minutes, 21.8 seconds, 123.27, exactly the senior lap record. There's Gable. Colin Gable's overshot the box by a mile. He's Bob Jackson in, but he did stop, and I think they give them a bit of charity on it. He definitely stopped, but he wasn't in the box, but I don't think there's much uh, problem with that now. Bob Jackson then just changing his helmet. Gable at the pits. Both seem to be okay. No major work being done as we hand on to Morris Maudsley. Motorcycle News, Glen Helen.
Yes, thank you, Jeff. So it's uh, a four-second advantage as they left the pits for number four, Carl Fogarty, who should be with us any moment now, the race leader after those dramatic pit stops. And here he is, number four, Carl Fogarty. Snakes a bit as he comes out of that and into that long left-hander. A little bit wider this time, with the power on up towards Craig Willys, but he's safely through a lap four. Carl Fogarty, the race leader, following those pit stops. This is one of the back markers, number 58, Robert Price on the Kawasaki, Robert from Gloucester. So we've got two and a half minutes or thereabouts to wait to see whether Hislop can pull back some of that uh, loss that they had in the pits, about 12 seconds. I think uh, as they went in there, Hislop had a, an advantage of about eight seconds. And on the exit from the pits, that was a deficit of four. So some 12 seconds lost there. And the tactics into play, of course, Robert Dunlop having had a, a wheel change, but no wheel change for number four, Carl Fogarty, who will have to do six on that now. And, of course, uh, four for number 19, Steve Hislop. So a great race, there's no doubt about that. And pit stop certainly shuffling the order every time we come over. Number 21, circulating well, Steve Williams, uh, despite that obvious problems that he had at the start, which uh, cost him an awful lot of time. But uh, having a good run in the absolute glorious sunshine and glorious weather conditions here. The clock ticks on. It's over a minute now. We'll get the charge of some of the middle leaderboard men, of course, notably amongst those. Number 10, Robert Dunlop on the new wheel. And number 7, of course, uh, Nick Jeffries lying in that fourth place. In fact, he's had three fourth places already this week in the Formula 1, the 400 and the 600. So he'll have picked up a few, Bob. Great performance by the very likable Nick Jeffries lying in fourth place, but well down. Number 34, of course, is one we don't tend to be able to get on uh, at our commentary position on air. Number 34 going well, Jason Griffiths lying in sixth place on the last lap here, that was. And uh, num in number 28, of course, also going well, Simon Beck in eighth place. Some of the later runners holding very high leaderboard positions there and many of them having an absolutely great ride. So the clock ticks on now. It's the uh, 1 minute 50 seconds already elapsed uh, since the end of uh, lap, f lap three at the, uh, the pits. Four seconds, remember, the advantage for number four, Carl Fogarty, over the Norton of number 19, Steve Hislop. And how many people around this course would love to see a Norton win? Many, many of them, I'm sure. But a great race nonetheless, and certainly uh, it's interesting the tactics that uh, take place in the pits. There's a lot of fooling goes on. Right, here's number seven, Nick Jeffries, that uh, fourth place man on the uh, Castrol Honda number 10. Robert Dunlop on the Norton with the new wheel, very wide. He's much wider, gets a signal as he goes away from us, up towards Craig Willis, and then along the long, cronky body straight. But here's number 19. Now, Steve Hislop, we stop the watch on. 232.6, so that's still an advantage for Carl Fogarty, but it's down to uh, under three seconds, certainly. Less than three seconds, the advantage, so it's been reduced by certainly a second or just over. So his lop is certainly catching him. He will catch him, certainly. There's no doubt about that, provided all goes well mechanically. Number one, Robert Holden, because he's certainly the quicker man around the course. Here's up an absolutely tremendous performance. The only reason that there's so little difference between them is the time lost on two pit stops. The first for the wheel change, and then they seem to lose a little bit there. I think uh, Jeff suggested there was perhaps a little bit of trouble with the filler cap, which would have uh, lost a little bit of time. Number 68, we can mention him again. We got him in on the last lap, Martin Grain. He finished in 19th place last year and was 22nd in the, or 32nd in the Formula One earlier this week. Well, last week now, wasn't it? Saturday, amazing that a week's gone by. So three seconds we make the advantage. It's one second less than it was one that when they exited the pit. The advantage still with Carl Fogarty. That could well have changed by Ramsey. So it's number four, Carl Fogarty leading by three seconds from number 19, Steve Hislop. Hislop is now a massive 79 seconds ahead of number 10, Robert Dunlop. The Nortons in second and third place. Then in fourth place, number seven, Nick Jeffries. Nick Jeffries is 27 seconds down on Robert Dunlop. Clearly, we won't be able to slot in uh, number 34, Jason Griffiths, just yet. There is another machine now, number 16, Mark Farmer. He will slot into that fifth place. But the news on uh, Glenn Helen on lap four is that the lead is just three seconds for Fogarty over 19, Hislop. Hislop 79 seconds ahead of number 10, Robert Dunlop. Robert Dunlop. 27 seconds ahead of number 7, Nick Jeffries, with that back to the Motorcycle News Grandstand. In der vierten Runde führte Nummer 19 Steve Hislop. Das hat sich aber schon geändert. 7,4 Sekunden vor Nummer 4 Carl Fogarty. Da war 53,8 Sekunden für Nummer 10 Robert Dunlop. Mavis. En tête, après 4 Tours du Circuit, le numéro 19, Steve Hislop, 7,4 Sekunden avance sur le numéro 4 Carl Fogarty, 53,8 Sekunden avance sur le numéro 10 Robert Dunlop. Peter. 
Well, there's still a very good battle for sixth place going on. Number 34, Jason Griffiths, holds the advantage over number one, Robert Holden, by just six seconds. Six seconds separating sixth and seventh. Simon Beck, number 28, unfortunately, is retirement. We'll give you the details a little later, but we've now got to dash straight over to Motorcycle News at Ramsey Hepin. Yes, where we await the arrival of... Uh... Numero quatre, number four, the red and the white and the black of the Loctite Yamaha. It's amazing, isn't it? Just one month ago, I did an interview with um, Carl Fogarty and Steve Hislop down at Bransach on the Motorcycle News Hotline, and uh, Hislop wasn't coming to the TT, and Foggy was down to ride a Ducati. But uh, the music started, and when it stopped, Hizzy was on the uh, Arbus uh, Shell EBC Norton, and here's this man here on the Loctite Yamaha, number four, Carl Fogarty. Start the watch running now, 2.30. Oh dear, oh dear, every time as he just goes out of sight, the sheer horsepower as he cranks it right-handed, it quite literally ties itself into a knot and gets into a horrific wobble, uh, climbing up, up on the way up toward that right-hand, up toward the top of uh, Waterworks. Thankfully, he wobbles away out of our sight, and we don't see the net result of uh, him fighting that one to sort it out, but uh, it sounded crisp enough. There was no wrong with the exhaust note on that occasion. That was sharp, and that was clean, but by golly, the physical effort required to hang on to these one. 145 horsepower plus beast is phenomenal. No problem, I suppose, for the likes of Foggy and Hizzy. They've uh, done it all before, haven't they? Both uh, members of the Team Endurance uh, factory squad for Kawasaki France, where they quite literally keep going round and round and round and round and round uh, for, well, up to 24 hours, but not 24 hours on their own, but sharing it with two or three men in the seat. So uh, Hizzy and Foggy should both be fit enough for this caper, but it is so physically demanding. Certainly a section, let's say, like coming from Ren Cullen on the way down through Bishop court on toward Alpine Cottage and then down toward Belaf Bridge, averaging over 160 mile an hour through that section and the physical effort in trying to uh, turn a motorcycle. Uh, well, we've got news, I think, from Jeff Cannell down in the pits. So let's quickly go over there. Jeff? Yeah, it's looked like problems for Paul Hunt here. Certainly the left-hand side linkage appears to be a bit loose, but they're hoping it'll be okay. He takes a drink. The exhaust pipes sound a bit raucous as well, but it looks as if he's going to crack on. Although there doesn't seem to be much urgency about it. You're all right? Uh, yeah, uh... It's not handling too good. I've had to put all new forks on and they're not set up, so uh, going for a finish. OK, back to Fred Clark, MCN, Ramsey Hairpin. Thanks, Jeff. And uh, 1.40, 1 minute 40 has ticked on, so we've got a little bit of time yet uh, before Hizzy hoves into sight. And remember, it's 2 minutes 30 seconds, anything less, and number 19, Steve Hislop leads, anything more, and number 4, uh, Foggy leads. Keeping the TT alive, this is Max Radio TT 365. <laughs> He should be coming now, should Hizzy. The white, no, this is Robert Dunlop. This is the high Mac Norton. And here's Hizzy behind him. The two Nortons are together. That's number 10, Robert Dunlop. He knows what his score is. And there's Hizzy. We go to the signal. 226, 226. So Hizzy leads by four seconds. Steve Islop is leading by four seconds. He's got it back as Steve Islop. He's made seven seconds up on Carl Fogarty since they left uh, Morris Morsley down there in the Glen Helen section. So that is now four seconds the advantage to Steve Hislop. Stevie Wonder, the flying hag is now with Carl Fogarty already thundering out. It'll be past Guthrie Memorial. It'll be on the mountain mile where on today's weather they'll be thundering along there, knocking on 190 miles an hour on the mountain mile before those two right-handers at the end and they become acute corners at the end. And uh, those two corners before they go on the anchors into the mountain box, then onto the black hut, on toward the, uh, the veranda and onto the bungalow. That's all lying before for them. There's number one, Bob Holden, and uh, we got uh, Steve, uh, Phil Mc, uh, Phil Hitchin alongside me, Phil, and uh, did you, you're listening to the Norton there of Steve Islop. Yeah, we've been putting the board out for Steve, Fred, and you could hear it, clearly hear something clanking. He was going going round the hairpin. It did sound like the chain. Whether it's got any slacker or not, I'm not sure, but you could clearly hear something knocking. Yeah, it may well just be the change of slapping on the swinging arm because he would be probably having not under drive at that point and uh, no tension on the chain. So I don't think any cause for severe panic at the moment. It might just be a warning point, though, to the team. Barry Simmons down there in pitch lane that if it was, uh, if uh, Hizzy does come in for a quick uh, a call into pit, then it might just be to for some attention to the rear chain. But uh, no cause for panic at the moment. Seven, uh, we have uh, four seconds the advantage to Foggy. Foggy, one minute, 33 seconds ahead of uh, Robert Dunn. But uh, here's Mark Farmer, and he's on the leaderboard. Number 16, Mark Farmer. And uh, visually, you can tell the two leaders from the rest of the pack. The 
Jolly, it sounds crisp, it sounds nice. It's a beautiful sound from the uh, four into one of the Loctite Yamaha, but uh, contrast that with the way that Foggy goes up the hill, away up toward Waterworks, and uh, on each and every lap, the power unleashed in such a vicious uh, power curve that that back end is quite literally trying to get in front of the front. Well, Steve Hislop, four seconds ahead of Carl Fogarty, and they'll be over the mountain and uh, heading down towards Signpost very shortly. We look back, one minute, 33 seconds to Robert Dunlop, who is 23 seconds ahead of number seven, Nick Jeffries. Nick is nine seconds ahead of uh, Mark Farmer, but Mark Farmer enjoys a very comfortable cushion of one minute, 39 seconds ahead of number one, Bob Holden. But we don't want to miss the leaders coming through to complete their fifth lap, so we're going back now to the Motorcycle News Grandstand. You're listening to coverage of the 1992 Senior TT Race brought to you by the Toolbox and Draper Tools. The Toolbox, stockiest of all the tools a biker needs at Church Road, Port Erin. There is a current bank account that pays 9% interest. But quite frankly, who gives a toss? You'll get a lot more interest on a Kawasaki ZXR750. Kawasaki. The Great Escape. Now there's a simple way to keep up with the action. Only you TT fans can get some satisfaction. If you can't get to the race, go to Skylark on your face before you set to mode. Just speak, chat for the phone and ring the TT. For an update on the TT action, ring 0696 888 Calls charge at 30 pence a minute at all times. Listen, Tommy, they're playing our tune. Ah, a little night music. Oh, you are quick. Pure reflex. Reflex from the RAC. Pick up a membership form from the Palace Hotel or ring free 0800 550 550 for details. It could save you 20 pounds. RAC, the new Knights of the Road. Yes, Carl Fogarty's arrived safely at Signpost Corner. While we await for his arrival, let me tell you that number 12, Bob Jackson, retired at Glen Helen. 15, Steve Lynn, still at the pits. 28, Simon Beck at Solby Bridge. He just said the bike blew up. And number 48, Frank Finch at Union Mills. Riders all OK. That's the news of the retirements. Number 61, Johnny Barton, who we told you won the Ellis Brown 100 pound for the best prepared rider and machine before the race started. He's going pretty well too because he's lapped it over 114 miles an hour and he's holding on to 14th place in the senior TT. And here's Carl Fogarty. He crosses the line. Now he gets the signal board. He knows the position. And we now have two minutes and 30 seconds to wait for Steve Hislop. And Carl Fogarty must be, what, over a minute at least ahead on the road of the pursuers. Number seven, Nick Jeffries, who's holding on to a fine fourth place. Perhaps one of the unluckiest men never to win a TT. We say that he's finished second four times and uh, very rarely out of the top six. And he's going to be in fourth position at the end of this lap also. With Steve Hislop now leading by some four seconds at Ramsey Hairpin on this fifth lap. And what sort of a lap are we going to see on the final circuit, I wonder? He equaled it, remember? He equaled his own lap record, including slowing for the pits on lap number three. Quite a performance indeed, on lap of four, I should say. No lights on as yet. It's still number four, the only one through, and he had a lap, including a pit stop, of 19 minutes, nine seconds, 118.21. And his average for the five laps, 120.73 miles an hour. 120.73 average, 19 minutes, 9 seconds, 118.21 miles an hour for number four, Carl Fogarty. Well, I said about a minute. It's a minute and 20 seconds now since he crossed the line. And still no sign of any other rider on the road between Signpost Corner and the finish of lap number five. Two minutes and 30 seconds, remember, number, no, number 21, the light has just come on. That's Steve Williams, who had an opening lap of 24 minutes. Sadly, because of all those problems, he got that down to a 20-minute lap on his second circuit. The light is on for number 19. Steve Hislop is at signpost corner. It's coming up now to one minute and 50 seconds now since Carl Fogarty crossed the line. Number 10, Robert Dunlop. Number 7, Nick Jeffries. Also on that same patch of road, signpost and the start. Two minutes have elapsed. We look now. Two minutes and 30, remember, is the starting dis difference between them. And here's the next machine on the road. This, I think, will be Steve Williams coming in for his pit stop. 
It is indeed number 21. It's two minutes and 20 seconds now. And here's Hislop. Hislop crosses the line. Now the back end really twitching. He's bouncing all over on that bike. And I stop my watch on two minutes, 24.6, which would be a 5.4 second advantage. There's Robert Dunlop on the other Norton. 5.4 seconds, I make it. Nick Jeffries goes through now, number seven, holding onto that fourth place. Pat O'Hanlon sitting beside me, nods and agrees. 5.4 seconds, so another 1.4 seconds. He's added to his lead, Hislop, on the climb and descent of the mountain. More information after the short break. You're listening to coverage of the 1992 Senior TT Race brought to you by the Toolbox and Draper Tools. The Toolbox, stockiest of all the tools a biker needs at Church Road, Port Erin. There is a current bank account that pays 9% interest. But quite frankly, who gives a toss? You'll get a lot more interest on a Kawasaki ZXR 750. Kawasaki, the great escape. Tonight is finals night at the Daily Star TT Festival at the Miss Wet T-Shirt Competition Man of Steel and Bike Balancing. Plus the draws for the Daily Star Honda 750 VFR, a mini bike. Plus music from the Brothers Grimm and Engine. Come early and see the UK Glamour Girl Review and the Daily Star Birds. That's finals night tonight at Summerland. Making some good contacts here, Pete. Oh, that right, Kev? Yeah. I met this bloke who knows a bloke who may be able to get me tickets to the Grand Prix at Donington. Wearing an AA uniform, was he, Kev? Win your way to through the AA. Five pairs of tickets to the British Grand Prix to be won. No purchase necessary. Entry forms from any AA representative or from the AA shop in Douglas. The official difference between Steve Hislop and Robert Dunn and Carl Fogarty at the end of the fifth lap is 5.4 seconds. Hislop leads Fogarty by 5.4 and a minute and a half down in third place is number 10, Robert Dunlop. Now Motorcycle News, Glenn Helen. Yes, thank you, Peter, for the sixth and final time. We expect the arrival of Carl Fogarty. Second place now on corrected time for Carl. He's here, just on cue. Left knee out on that Loctite Yamaha. Very neat, very stylish, but uh, there doesn't seem to be an answer to his lob. Tremendous performance indeed, but Carl Fogarty now through here for the sixth and final time, something less than 30 miles. He's flying lap that time, 18.26. That's a second less than it was on lap four, so 18 minutes, 26 seconds, the flying lap for Carl Fogarty, Glen Helen to Glen Helen. So we've two and a half minutes to wait. The tremendous performance and... Uh, well, the excitement that will be generated, I'm sure, back at the grandstand should uh, number 19, Hislop, manage to get that Norton cross the line in first place. Number 53, one of the back markers, John Krellin, one of the local competitors. Talking of whom, we have uh, local competitor Gary Radcliffe uh, holding on to a very, very good 10th place at Glen Helen on the last lap. Whilst we've got the opportunity, and it is the last time here, he's looking down, another machine interview. It won't be the pack just yet. There's number 54, Kurt Wright. I'd like to thank uh, Ian Turnbull, who's been my timekeeper this week, and hopefully we've been able to get you the, uh, the information, the very exciting information in many of these close races. So our great thanks to Ian out here at uh, Glen Helen, together with the new computerized system we have here, the stopwatches. We still use those, particularly when it's tight at the front, but uh, an excellent system to get these times out very quickly. I know he's got a printed record of the times this week, and that historically should be absolutely splendid. Incidentally, talking about history, Ian, of course, is... Uh, bit of an expert on this. He tells me that 40 years ago in the senior TT, it was won by Reg Armstrong on a Norton and his uh, primary chain broke as he crossed the finishing line. And to win, he pipped Les Graham on the MV, who was still at that stage looking for his first TT win, which he got the next year on the 125 before, unfortunately, being killed the following day. And Ian puts me a note to say he thinks that date was the 13th of June, Friday the 13th. That's 40 years ago tomorrow. So are we going to get another Norton win? 40 years ago, the senior TT won by Reg Armstrong and an Orton. Will it be now in 1992, a win for number 19, Steve Hislop, also on an Orton? Don't forget, of course, that uh, this isn't the completion of uh, racing, although it is on the mountain circuit, because we do have the steam packet races tomorrow evening down on the Balloon circuit. So it's two minutes and 15 seconds now since uh, Fogarty went through here. Two minutes, 20. Now then, the next man on the road. This is number 19, Hislop. We stopped the watch. Two minutes, 24. 
eight seconds would give him a lead of six seconds. Six seconds, the advantage for number 19, Steve Hislop. The Norton's in the lead. This is number 10, Robert Dunlop. Norton also holding on to third place. A bit bumpy as he goes away from here. Number seven also, Nick Jeffries. So it's six seconds, the advantage for number 19 with something less than 30 miles to go. He doesn't seem to pull as much out on this stretch as he does between here and Fleg Craig Clark at Ramsey, and I would expect uh, that to be extended by the time they get there. But it's six seconds here on the sixth and final time. The Norton is in the lead with just less than 30 miles to go. Steve Hislop leads number four, Carl Fogarty, by six seconds. In third place, of course, we've got Robert Dunlop, but well adrift on that. And in fourth place, that very good performance by Nick Jeffries. So it's number 19. Steve Hislop leading by six seconds from number four, Carl Fogarty. Then in third place, number 10, Robert Dunlop. One minute and 37 seconds down on second place man, number four, Carl Fogarty. Then further 37 seconds adrift, number seven. This is number 21, Steve Williams. He keeps getting a mention after that bad start. So number seven. Nick Jeffries in fourth place, 37 seconds behind the uh, flying lap at Glen Helen for number 19, Hislop, as we take number one, Robert Holden through. 18 minutes, 17 seconds, we make the flying lap. That's a second quicker than it was the last time we did that on lap four, when it was 18, 18. So 18 minutes, 17 seconds, nine seconds a lap, or thereabouts quicker than number four, Carl Fogarty. And clearly, the race has been so tight because of the interest and excitement that's been in the pits, but uh, at Glen Helen, for the sixth and final time, it's a lead for our number 19, Steve Hislop, over number four, Carl Fogarty, by six seconds. In third place, number 10, Robert Dunlop, one minute and 37 seconds down on Fogarty. In fourth place, number seven, Nick Jeffries, 37 seconds down on Dunlop. There's number 16 going through, Mark Farmer. He undoubtedly is in fifth place, but with that, it's back to the Motorcycle News commentary position at the grandstand. You're listening to coverage of the 1992 Senior TT Race brought to you by the Toolbox and Draper Tools. The Toolbox, stockiest of all the tools a biker needs at Church Road, Port Erin. Listen, Tommy, they're playing our tune. Ah, a little night music. Oh, you are quick. Pure reflex. Reflex from the RAC. Pick up a membership form from the Palace Hotel or ring free 0800 550 550 for details. It could save you £20. RAC, the new Knights of the Road. Freeze this year's TT action and take it home with you. Colour photographs of the race you're now watching will be available from Island Photographics before their shop in Castle Street closes today. And you can order your favourite action shots or rider photos in any size from postcard to blow-ups 24 inches by 20. Freeze! The best shots are at Island Photographics, 26 Castle Street, Douglas. Just because you ride an FZ hard doesn't make you hard best at everything. Hmm, there's Exip, of course. Yeah, but... Uh, Delta Box? Well, apart from that... The Genesis concept. Well... More TT wins than anyone else. World champions, free RAC Okay, company. okay. Yamaha, a breed apart. Steve Hislop is a Michelin man. Oh, can I be a Michelin man? I've already got a 125cc. From small bikes to super bikes, Michelin have the range and performance to make a Michelin man out of anyone. See your dealer. Make sure it's a Michelin. Oh, I'm going to be just like Izzy. Ooh. Nach der fünften Runde führte doch wieder Nummer 19 Steve Hislop. 5,4 Sekunden von Nummer 4 Carl Fogarty. Da war wieder 34... Äh, Eine Minute 34 Sekunden von Nummer 10, Robert Dunlop. Après 5 tours en tête, le numéro 19, Steve Hislop, 5,4 secondes d'avance sur le numéro 4, Carl Fogarty, 1 minute 34,8 secondes d'avance sur le numéro 10, Robert Dunlop. Peter. Well, we have the first five confirmed, 19, 4, 10, 7, and 16. Just waiting for number 34, Jason Griffiths, who's due to slot into the sixth place. He'll be followed by number 14, Ian Duffus. Uh, number, sorry, by number one, Holden, 14, Duffus, and number eight, Gable, as we go to Motorcycle News, Ramsey. Yes, for the final time, and what a glorious uh, fortnight we've had here, Peter, and again, as the only non-Manx resident on the team, uh, I can't wait to get back here again next year. Here's Foggy. He sees the board. He just got the mountain climb to go now. And, uh, well, he's given it his best shot, and uh, will it be good enough? And 
again, that vicious, vicious snake as he gets on the gas. What a tremendous performer, Carl Fogarty, and really one has to say, uh, people lucky as we are, those on the inside of the fence, what a great uh, sense of pride one has of uh, being uh, able to call people like uh, Carl Fogarty, Steve Hislop, and the boys uh, as uh, socialising friends. They really are supermen when they get their office suit on and get out on the track to do the business. Well, 18 minutes 21, uh, Ramsey to Ramsey for Carl Fogarty, and uh, he uh, now will be on his way up past the gooseneck and heading then on the run up toward uh, Guthrie's before that uh, very fast high speed uh, 190 mile an hour plus run across the mountain mile. 45 seconds having now elapsed as we await upon the arrival of uh, Steve Hislop. The deal, well, it came together courtesy of Mike Brandon, Mike Brandon of Arbor Security Locks, the, the man that uh, got the money together and got co sponsors of Shell and EBC Brakes, Andy Freeman of EBC Brakes and uh, Michelin to put the money together to lease the uh, JPS Nortons, the uh, Nortons that uh, are now painted white. The white tornadoes they are the ones normally ridden by rocket ron haslam and as i said earlier <clears throat> for those of you watching the recently televised donnington park meeting ridden by terry reimer looks like the modifications have worked to keep his head down and his weight a little bit more forward to help the uh, handling uh, to tuck away behind the fairing raise that back seat and raise the screen and uh, he would have had a much more comfortable ride certainly along the quick parts of the circuit of which now the mountain mile is one along Salby straight as the other uh, possibly the run down past the highlander and possibly the run from the Craig down toward uh, Brandish. Those now the four quickest parts of the circuit. I know that the gearing is, uh, well, this boy's touring. He's, uh, well, it's a high speed tour. Is he uh, still in the game? Kirk Wright, yes, he is. He gives no indication that he's got a problem, but it was not a high speed run up toward us. But um, that's going back to uh, Steve Hislop, uh, his machine, talking with Barry Simmons. And I know the gearing is being poured on Robert Dunlop's uh, HiMac Norton, John Kennedy of HiMac uh, Heavy Earth Moving Equipment of Wolverhampton. But uh, geared for 195 miles now, if it pulls peak revs. Uh, but uh, with slippage, that would uh, probably be doing about 185, 190. Next man should be, should be the Hizzy. The flying kilt, here he comes, 218, 219, 220, he's clean the air, 221, 222, stop the watch at 223, that is seven seconds, seven seconds for Steve Hislop, and now all the way around the circuit, his fingers crossed, toes crossed, legs crossed, anything else you've got to cross, to just uh, now hope and pray that the Norton and the Loctite Yamaha go the full distance, let's get the boys home nice and safe, I don't care who wins this one, but let's get them home nice and safe, and there's your man Mark II, young Robert with that distinctive exhaust and right here, <laughs> you cheeky little monkey. He looked back and gave us the order. Thumbs to nose job did uh, Robert Dunlop here. I'll be up to him. And in uh, fact, uh, we should have put in the substitute rider. We were actually going to substitute uh, Robert Dunlop for that well-known uh, Yorkshire man, uh, Willie Ekelak. But uh, Willie Ekelak wasn't ready for this DT races. Me and Volby will have us both off. Yeah, we should get old George Formby back for this one, shouldn't we? Well, Phil, it's uh, off to Mallory Park on Sunday after this uh, extravaganza, but of course the big show this evening, we're, no, no, it's not the resurrection of the uh, the Fred Clark Five at the uh, karaoke. We're off to the, uh, the wet t-shirt contest, are we not? Only if you insist, Fred. Censored. And uh, we move on then to the lower leaderboard, and what can we tell you? Well, nothing other than Hizzy leads Foggy by seven seconds. One minute, 45 seconds, Robert back in third place. Well, as we heard from Morris thanking his timekeeper, I too would like to thank uh, Dave Phillips and uh, uh, for all the sterling work that he's done. I'd like to thank uh, Julie Watson, of course, for the tremendous uh, performance that she gave us the other evening down at the pit stop, and all the staff at the Imperial Hotel. I'd also like to thank Phil Hitchin. I'd like to thank Phil Hitchin, but I'm not going to thank Phil Hitchin. As we await on a clear track, and fourth place, yes, Nick Jeffers. Well done, Nick. Kate's hubby is there, 35 seconds behind uh, uh, Robert Dunlop, as Paul Fowler would say. How nice to see the old men out enjoying themselves in the sun. There's number one, Bob Holden, and number 21, Steve Williams. Well, it all went wrong for Steve Williams at the start, but uh, at least he's getting his four six laps in. He's paid his money for the entry, so he's intent on uh, seeing it right the way through to the uh, the chequered flag. What a glorious shootout in the sun it's been. It was uh, looked forward to with great anticipation, and we have not been let down at all. This will be Mark Farmer, and Mark Farmer, surely a TT winner, not so far ahead. On, on the lock tight Yamaha, just easy to face, and gets on the gas, slips the clutch, drives it away, and 
and uh, he's well on his way now, climbing up the hill over to uh, the uh, waterworks, not toward Tower Bends. Uh, on the last lap, we had uh, John Barton you were talking about. We had him in 11th place. John Barton, in fact, that is the machine that was owned and ridden last year by Steve Hislop, now the possession of uh, Rupert Murden. But let's quickly go back then. Nick Jeff is uh, 11 seconds ahead of Mark Farmer, who is two, two minutes ahead of uh, Hot Bob Holden. So Hislop, seven seconds from Fogarty. One minute 45 is Robert Dunlop. 35 seconds is Nick Jeffries. 11 seconds, four seconds from Bob Holden. And it's farewell, goodbye, and see you all next year from Ramsey Hairpin back to the grandstand. You're listening to coverage of the 1992 Senior TT Race brought to you by the Toolbox and Draper Tools. The Toolbox, stockiest of all the tools a biker needs at Church Road, Port Erin. There is a current bank account that pays 9% interest. But quite frankly, who gives a toss? You'll get a lot more interest on a Kawasaki ZXR 750. Kawasaki. The Great Escape. Robert Dunlop is a Michelin man. Wish I were a Michelin man, but I'm more into trail bikes like Whatever that. bike you ride, Michelin have the range and performance to make a Michelin man out of anyone. See your dealer. Make sure it's a Michelin. With a name like Dunlop, you'd have to like it. Yeah. Coverage of the 1992 Senior TT Race was brought to you by the Toolbox and Draper Tools. Open every day at Church Road, Port Erin. The light is on, Carl Fogarty safely at signpost corner on the sixth and final lap of the 1992 Senior TT. Number four on the Loctite Yamaha. We wait for him with watches poised. Riders going through now to start their sixth and final circuit, battling, as we always say, maybe for finishers awards, maybe a bronze replica, and if they get a silver replica, well, that is absolutely fantastic as far as they're concerned. A machine is in view, travelling very quickly. This is him, number four, Carl Fogarty, crosses the line now. We start the watch, and we have two and a half minutes to wait for Steve Hislop. Carl Fogarty, after a disappointment of retiring in the Formula One and the Supersport 400, is safely in. The watch is ticking away. Let me tell you that number 12, Bob Jackson, has retired to Glen Helen. 36, James Hodson, retired at the 26 milestone. Number 41, Paul Orrett, retired at the pits. Number 50, Chris Petty, came off at the Black Hut. He's been taken to Nobles Hospital with minor injuries. So, let's wait now for... Carl Fogarty, he should be down there. I can tell you it's coming up to 40 seconds now since he crossed the line. Let's join Jeff. He's right with us now and no man could have done any more. And has he won it? It's not a formality for his lap as yet, but he looks down to the right-hand side and the silencer, the big uh, pipe at the back is loose and it looks as if it may have cost him just a little bit of time. In fact, all the back end of it, I think, is gone altogether. And he doesn't even lift his visor for a moment. First, where have you been to? That's Jack Annerley saying, where did he get to? Just pobbling round at 125. Well, if that is the end of Carl Fogarty's rides on the TT course, it was an incredible race reminiscent of 67 with Halewood and Agostini. Jeff, an outright record for Carl Fogarty, 18 minutes, 18.8, 123.61 miles an hour. Lap record, 123.6 for Carl Fogarty. No man could have striven more on this machine. There wasn't a sixteenth of an ounce left. And uh, difficulty undoing his crash helmet here, and uh, perhaps you'll tell us when the lights on for his laps, uh, Peter. But Carl, an incredible race. Thanks, Jeff. That was unbelievable. You must have been trying at a fantastic rate the whole way, and yet the Norton was just inching it ahead. Yeah, I was trying hard, really hard. Um, you know, a few problems with the front brake. I came to pump it back a few times, and the exhaust started blowing two laps ago. And yeah, I was trying really hard, but uh, I just seemed to be losing power somehow. It just didn't feel right, the same as it did on Saturday, but. Uh, I'm just pleased to finish some thanks to Loctite Yamaha for letting me ride and Dunlop tyres. They really work good. So. Well, it's not a formality that Hislop's going to win yet, but the he light, is heading the down the mountain now. It's two minutes and 12 seconds, 13, 14, 15, 16, two minutes, 30, remember, was the difference. Just coming 18, up now. 19, 20, here he is. It's, it's going, going to be Hissy, it's afraid. going to be Hissy. See if Hislop crosses the line. Now the Norton wins on my watch by 4.4 seconds. And the excitement four here seconds. is tremendous. Hard luck, hard luck, four seconds. Well, that is tremendous. The first Norton senior win since 1961 and the first Norton win since 1973, Peter Williams. 
in what's been an electrifying race. And Carl Fogarty, well, you can't deny he is absolutely choked, but he couldn't have done any more. Carl, you did the first four laps on the first tyre and then two on the other. Here he is. Listen to that. Steve Hislop wins the senior TT on an Norton. And it's taken everything out of him, I'm pretty certain of that. But that is absolutely marvellous to conclude what's been a terrific 92 TD. Who would have said he could have done it after Fogarty stuck it away in the Formula One until he retired. But this takes the biscuit. And Steve takes his helmet off now and he's won it by four seconds. Steve, fantastic. Ah, oh, thanks, Jeff. How did you do it? How did you hang on to keep pulling back when you were down, down, down? Oh, I just kept hanging on. I the first couple of laps I tried to ride a lot steadier than I did on uh, Saturday because I knew if Carl had to go near the end, he'd probably tire himself out. And the bike is handling a lot better today. And I just, I rode real steady. Somebody said to me, a spectator said earlier in the week, you're trying too hard, that's why you're, you're uh, making a mess of your first laps. And I just tried to get into a nice rhythm and uh, chuffed. But well, you did the four laps on the same tyre from the end of the second lap. Yeah, it was starting to slide a little in the last two laps, but I mean, uh, oh, it's brilliant. Chuffed. And the chain was a bit slack as well. Did you hear that clanking? Yeah, it, was, it jumped out of gear a couple of times, actually. But, uh, I mean, brilliant. it seems a lot easier to ride today. I mean, I must thank Trevor Nation, actually, because Trevor get, I had a chat with him the other night down at the karaoke, and uh, Trevor told us to... So, I mean, it worked. So, brilliant. It was absolutely stupendous, and I think your choice of number 19 rather than going to the front uh, didn't do you any harm either. You got the latest signals. I was always able to see somebody today, um, and uh, I just, a uh, brilliant ride. I just loved it. So, is that it for the TT now then? Yeah, it's a lovely way to end winning on the Norton. I mean, the fans are really brilliant. It just egging us on there. And uh, I must thank everybody who was sticking out signal boards everywhere because. I actually struggled to get one uh, organised for the early part of the lap today, so um, I really thank everybody. You can scarcely believe that you weren't supposed to ride this machine three weeks ago, can you? I know, uh, what a turn up, eh? Brilliant. Just shows you what you can do to jump on it and tame it and win the senior TD. Absolutely extraordinary. Congratulations. Thanks, Jeff. How does it write among you, you? Okay, let's the rest get at them now, then. <laughs> Tell you what, we always get in first. They've got to have big elbows to beat me, I'll tell you. But Jeff, Robert it's Dunlop. Interesting, it's interesting to note that Carl Fogarty still holds the absolute lap record because Steve was just a second slower on that, but he's put up the fastest average speed, Steve. Point to eight, the fastest race ever. Okay, honours shared then, and Robert Dunlop third, and a Norton 1 3. Robert, you wouldn't begrudge Steve that one, would you? No, I, it's a credit to Norton, the Norton Motor Company. Well, you know what they like to ride. They're some beasts. I mean, with respect, they're fantastic bikes, but they take a lot of holding. They take a lot of holding, all right, but Steve was riding his really well. He passed me up the mountain, and I all credit to him and Norton. He just uh, a one in, one in combination, Jeff, really. He's done really well to get Carl on the Yamaha, hasn't he? Yes, because, uh, you know, I knew Carl wouldn't be easy to beat. Uh, well, I'm sure so did Steve, but after doing 123 on Saturday, I'm sure he was pretty confident that if he get going from the word go, that he could hold him off, so... So watching them from a slight distance, then third will please you no end, I should think. Yeah, considering how the week has went so far, I'm delighted to be third, yeah. You've got a lot of uh, oil on your left boot, I notice. Uh, or is that water from the pop you're drinking? <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a slight oil leak on the left-hand side, but... It wasn't a dangerous leak because it wasn't getting on the tyre, but it just got onto my foot rest and I found it really hard to change direction. And I was a wee bit sceptical of going anti left-handers too fast, so... If, uh, if anybody thinks I was slow in the left-hand corners, they'll know why. <laughs> I'm sure nobody noticed, but uh, that's a tremendous effort, which, in fact, at the speed you were going, you'd have won it two years ago. Oh, is that right? Good. OK, an extraordinary week there, then, and what a senior TT. Those are the top three, and they're in, and Steve Hislop is absolutely surrounded. You can't even see him here. There must be 60 or 70 allegedly accredited people here trying to get the story from him, but we've heard his thoughts on how he did it. And, well, this race will be talked about for a long time to come, and I'm just trying to dial it into my head because you tend to gloss it over. But the 67 race emulated 25 years ago uh, today, but no problems for the top two, and it's not often that two people will dice it out, Peter Neal, for the full six laps, is it? 
It isn't indeed, and there's been two tremendous this races, races this week where that old finger on the stopwatch is poised. It's uh, tremendous, and uh, well, Robert's been around at 120.90, and his average speed was 119.10 as well. I Nick, presume that Nick Jeffries is fourth, Yeah, is he? Nick got fourth, Mark Farmer fifth, and Rob Holden got a very, very good sixth place. Jason Griffin, unfortunately, retired when he was holding sixth place at Hillbury. That's Colin Gable's machine coming in here. So what do we have, Mark Farmer then? Fifth, Peter, was it? Mark Farmer, fifth, and Robert Holden in sixth place. Well done, Mark. Good ride to fifth. You've had a good week, really. Yeah, I was uh, quite pleased, really. I was hoping for top six again, which fifth, uh, finished fifth Monday was really surprised, so it's good. Some pace, though, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't at the front. <laughs> well, you weren't far off it going well and nibbling the 120 all the time. You've got a shift, haven't you? You've yeah. made something of a comeback, really, because you were fading from the TD, but you've really come back with a bang. Oh, yeah, I know. Oh. <laughs> That's what uh, a competitive motorcycle does for you. So. Well, Carl's machine just beaten by the, the Norton, but, uh, well, it was a head-down race, and both bikes finished without major problem, and tremendous win by Steve Hislop. Yeah, it's brilliant for Steve, like, but uh, we've got to thank... Uh, the Loctite mechanics for all the hard work they've done all week. And the two machines, in fact, three of the four rides you've had between the pair of you, you've finished, haven't you? It's only Carl yeah. in the first race, but you've finished twice and he's finished once. Yeah, excellent. Couldn't argue with that. Well done, Mark Farmer and uh, Nick Jeffries and Robert Holden. That's a plumbing good ride by Robert Holden, isn't it? Peter, good ride there. It is indeed excellent, and he uh, has lapped at 117 on his final circuit and uh, had an average speed of 116. And, uh, well, he's only been coming a couple of years, Robert, hasn't he? And he's certainly shown today what he's uh, capable of. Yeah, I think Nick, uh, I can see him in the distance. I uh, don't know about Rob Holden. Nick Jeffries is right up back by the warming up area, which is at the extreme top end. So, uh, well, I feel loath to break into a great trot at this time of the week, but we'll manage it, as I say. He sneaked past you, did he, Jeff? Yeah. Not by intent, I hope, though. And he's just standing looking ever so casual. <coughs> and, um, and he's Colin. Rob Holden as well. So we've got the pair for the top six here, and let's do it in chronological order. And Nick Jeffrey's just explaining some of the vagaries of that fantastic ride where you've set your best ever lap again, as we said yesterday, Nick. Well done. Well, we should say, like, good wine, but it's not true. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit second hand now, Jeff. Why is that, then? Well, we slowed the steering down yesterday on the bike, which was a correct move to give more stability, but it made it very slow steering. And I've been, as the uh, people on the 11th milestone will witness, I hit the curb down on the last lap. What, going out of the left-hander? Yeah. And uh, also the Conky Vody on about the fifth lap, I went down the, uh, against the hedge. So, getting a bit hairy here and there then? Yeah, I was actually up off the bike at the Black Dub as well, and had a, that's why I needed a new tyre, because the back tyre was shot. And that's had a big high side coming out of uh, ninth milestone. So that was quite interesting. OK, well, the Yamaha and the Norton both did four laps. Uh, the Yamaha did two and, uh, sorry, did four laps and then changed, and the Norton did it the other way. How did you find yours, or was it better to do it at the end of the second or the fourth? Actually, I was quite tempted to um, change at the end of the second, but I forgot to tell Fred Clark that, so uh, I didn't bother. But I, I was very careful third and fourth lap until I got a new tyre. OK, so you're happy there to be in the top six again. I think we said fourth, but in fact it's fifth, but we weren't bargaining when we were talking. I think so. No, fourth. Sorry, fourth, of course, yeah. Farmer, then Holden. Rob Holden's going well. I could, yeah, Rob was going very well when I caught Rob. In fact, uh, he jetted past me once when I, uh, when I passed him. He came past me again, so the bike was quick. In fact, so, we said number four yesterday at Laxey, didn't we? Number four again. Consistent, if nothing else, eh, Jeff? Well, there's no arguing about that with a pedigree of the top three and what a race at the front. You know, I once finished fourth in a Manx Studio trial as well. Did you have that, you? No, I've never <laughs> finished fourth. I finished sixth one time, but that was about 20 years before you were born. <laughs> well done, anyway. Thank great race. Much, Jeff. And Rob Holden, a superb ride to uh, sixth position. Well done. That is an extraordinary result for you. Well done. Yeah, we're quite pleased because I really didn't want to go off as number one because we'd had a lot of trouble through practice and um, we'd had trouble with the bike. But for today, we just decided to, you know, have a change of a few settings and see what would happen and um, just keep going round and round. And, and it worked in the end. What did you see of the great battle at the front? Well, um, Carl went past me very early on, and Steve Ward, and they're the only two I really saw. Nick Jeffries came past me just after the fuel stop. Um, I felt sorry for Nick, actually, because my bike was about 20 mile an hour quicker than his was, and um, he was really riding well. And, um, you know, I stayed with him for a while and sorted a few bits out I was having trouble with, but everybody then went away. I never really saw anybody for the whole of the race after that. I was on my own. So you emulate, uh, I think Glenn Williams was seventh last year and sixth this year, two New Zealanders uh, at the top six, continuing the pedigree of people like Hugh Anderson. 
Yeah, well, you know, I, I really wanted to be the fastest New Zealand around here, and um, I think Glenn last year did 116.55, and according to my pit crew, he should have done something around about 117 or so then. So if I go away fastest New Zealander at the moment, I'm more than happy. Okay, where do you go away to now? What's the rest of your program? Um, the Ulster Grand Prix is my next one, and um, then we'll probably do a few of the um, English um, MCN Superbike rounds. We can't do the BBC Super Cup because of the licence problem, but... Um, We'll see if we can do the MC and Superbike rounds and um, carry on from there. Well, you must be well pleased with your Isle of Man effort and long may you come to ride in the TT. Thank you very much. Jeff, Thank you, you. tell him he left at 117.66. 117.66. I'm very happy with that. <laughs> OK, that's even better than you thought, just a mite quicker. Top six then, I think we've covered. Let's go back down and we'll pick up a few more finishes, but Peter, you'll have more statistics, I'm sure. We have indeed. We can go through the uh, top six at the moment and tell you that the winner, of course, was Steve Hislop, a final lap of 18 minutes, 19.8, 123.50, a race time of 1 hour, 51 minutes, 59.6 seconds, an average speed of 121.28, the fastest TT ever in the history of the races. In second place, number four, Carl Fogarty, a final lap of 18 minutes, 18.8, 123.61 miles an hour, which is the new absolute lap record, a time for the race of one hour, 52 minutes, four seconds, 121.20, which was also inside the old race record. In third place, number 10, Robert Dunlop, a final lap of 18 minutes, 43.4, 120.90, a race time of one hour, 54 minutes, 2.6, 119.10. In fourth place, number seven, Nick Jeffries, a lap of 18 minutes, 39.6, 121.31, a race time of one hour, 54 minutes, 33.2, 118.57. In fifth place, number 16, Mark Farmer, a final lap of 18 minutes, 46.6, 120.56. Race time, 1 hour, 54 minutes, 47.6, 118.32. And completing the top six, number one, Rob Holden, a lap of 19 minutes, 14.4, 117.66. A race time of 1 hour, 57 minutes, 3.6, 116.03. And uh, I think we've just got time now to uh, get a brief word from Barbara McNeil. Thank you, Peter. I wiederhole noch einmal the position and Durchschnittsgeschwindigkeit in the first three Fahrer. Erster Nummer 19, Steve Hislop, 121,28 mph, 195,1 km. Zweiter Nummer 4, Carl Fogarty, 121,20, 195 km. Und er hat auch eine neue Rundenrekundenzeit von 198,8 km. Dritter Nummer 10, Robert Dunlop, 119,10, 191,6 km. Mavis. À la fin de la Senior TT, le vainqueur, le numéro 19, Steve Hislop, en 1h51, 59,6 secondes, avec une vitesse moyenne de 195,1 km par heure. En deuxième, le numéro 4, Carl Fogarty, 1h52,4 secondes, vitesse moyenne de 195 km par heure. Et en troisième, le numéro 10, Robert Dunlop, avec une vitesse moyenne de 191,6 km par Peter. Thank you indeed, ladies. And uh, we do have a note from uh, Les Doherty. Uh, he'd like to say a general thanks for everyone who's collected for and contributed to the helicopter fund, especially to Graham Slew, who's collected £731 at Balaf Bridge. Well done indeed to everyone, and thank you very much. And just a reminder, there is a competition available where you can win a new 600 CBR Honda by entering a very simple competition. Entry forms are available um, at the Palace, at Summerland, and in the Tourist Department shop in the Market Hall at the rear of the Grandstand. And all the proceeds of that also go to the Helicopter Fund. Coupon was in Motorcycle News as well, so you can send it from there as well. And our thanks to everyone who's helped to organize that competition. Now, I wonder how many people actually watch uh, Bob Your Uncle on a Saturday night on television where they try to fix up marriage proposals. Well, it may not be Bob Your Uncle, Peter Your Uncle here, because this is a message from race fan Stuart Emerton. He wants Marina McBride to marry him. So, Marina, if you're listening in, it's all up to you. 
Stuart Edmonton has asked us on his behalf to ask you, Marina McBride, to marry him. And perhaps if the answer is correct, you might kindly let us know at Minx Radio and we can pass on the congratulations. So there you go. Little unusual finish to the senior TT. And talking of finishes, let's go on with the 7th to 12th positions. In 7th place, number 14, Ian Duffus, a lap of 19 minutes, 19 seconds, 117.19, a race time, 1 hour, 58 minutes, 5.6, 115.01. Eighth, number 8, Colin Gable, a final lap, 19 minutes, 26 seconds, 116.49, race time, 1 hour, 58 minutes, 24.2, 114.71. Ninth, number 39, Derek Young, a final lap of 19 minutes, 26.8, 116.41, race time, 1 hour, 59 minutes, 48.2, 113.37. In 10th place, number 11, Johnny Ray, final lap, 19 minutes, 29.6, 116.13, race time, 1 hour, 59 minutes, 53.4, 113.29. 11th, number 20, Gary Radcliffe, the local rider, 19 minutes 42.8, 114.83, a race time of 2 hours, 8.8 sec seconds, 113.05. 12th, number 18, Tom Knight, 19 minutes 43.4, 114.77, race time 2 hours and 27.8 seconds, 112.75. 13th, number 27, David Goodley, 19 minutes 50 seconds, 114.14, race time 2 hours and 55.0 seconds, 112.33. 14th, number 6, Ian Locker, 19 minutes 38.2, 115.28, race time 2 hours, 1 minute 51 seconds, 111.47. And completing our top 15, number 26, Alan MacDonald, 20 minutes, 15.8, 111.71. Race time, 2 hours, 1 minute, 59.8, 111.33. And that completes our top 15 in the Senior TT for 1992. Now, a quick commercial break. Well, as we said, that's the uh, end of racing on the TT course for this week, but there are the Steam Packet National Road Races to be held on the Balan Circuit at Castletown tomorrow, practicing tomorrow afternoon, first race due off at 6.20. And there are three races, one for a 125 and 400 Supersport combined, a 250, 350, and a 750. And a lot of the top boys, including uh, Joey, Dunlop, Robert Dunlop, Philip McCallum, to name but three, they will be competing there, and uh, the weather forecast is good again, so it should be absolutely perfect weather conditions for that um, racing on the Southern 100 course tomorrow.